I'm going to call this uh, meeting of Tipsy Exemptive Village Schools Board of Education to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. To the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amber Drum, here. Teresa Dunaway, here. Rick Maines, here. Simon Patrick, here. And Zakor, here. <coughs> we have a quorum, we may begin the meeting. Thank you. I am now as one C approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? A motion. Motion by Mr. Strum. Is there a second? I'll second. Mr. Strum, any um, discussion? No, I'm good. No. Any other board members? Discussion? Go to the agenda. Yes, I'd like to add some. Uh, this would be the, I'd like to add for discussion, uh, per your suggestion, Mr. Patrick, the April, excuse me, your March 20th, 2023 email. And that's regarding uh, Robert's rules. Um, are there any other items you'd like to add? Yes, I'd also like to add for discussion purposes, if not action necessary, concerns about um, violation of contract, employee contract. Um, I should say negligence in um, Formulating, initiating employee contract. This is done. Good to go. Um, I, I would have um, an addition <coughs> for executive session the item four D before he would become regular session. I'll make these motions. Um, that is um, exact language here in one second.
I guess it would be a new item under new business. So it would be three. That would be. Uh, Pride Association correspondence. Well, right now, I think what we've got is. Um, just right now, it's all discussion. And this is uh, the core, the March 20th, 2023, that's the yes. uh, email from the driver's rules. Um, I think 3E was negligence and formation of employee contracts. Yes. We have. Um, the tip pride association correspondence. I, yeah, yes, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'd like to change the uh, discussion from uh, G4 session to a G5 matter where we kept confidential by federal laws or regulations or or stipulated section. So it becomes G5. G5. Yeah. And then uh, the new opening needs to be revised from G4 to G5. So Mrs. Fox, if this goes as fast as I can stay with, you would be revising 4A and 4B to reflect the executive session exception for G5. So in 4A, it'd be G5 and G1. And then you would change B to reflect G5, including the language uh, to discuss matters required to be kept confidential by federal law or regulations or state statutes. One other change I'd like to, to uh, uh, remove the old business item from this work session. Mark, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? I apologize. I'll oh, just uh, remove the old business item from the work session. Okay. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, with that, I would make a motion to amend the the, um, the present motion to approve the agenda to reflect the following revisions to the agenda. Item 3D would be Uh, I guess discussion item March 20th, 2023 email concerning Robert's rules. Number three, we would become uh, <laughs> negligence in the formation of employee contracts. Three F would be to pride association correspondence or a would be revised to reflect that 4A would now read the joint executive session purposes authorized under Board of Education Policy 0166 and all RC 121.22 G5 versus G4. 
the public content would be revised to reflect G5 and 4A as well, and the exception, which is to discuss matters required to be kept confidential by federal law or regulations or state statutes. Item 4B would also be revised to reflect the revision of 4A and the executive session item number one, D5 dash, to discuss matters required to be kept confidential by federal law or regulations or state statutes. Additionally, 5A would be removed from the agenda, which would leave future board agenda suggestions becoming number five, miscellaneous becoming number six, and adjournment becoming number seven. Is there a second? So now the motion, or so, so now the, the motion to approve as amended is before the board. Is there any further discussion? No discussion. This is Fox. The agenda as revised as discussed. <clears throat> it's ready for a vote on approval. Please call the vote. Audrey? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Mains? Yes. Secor? Yes. All right. Mrs. Fox, when that's done, I know you got have to work to, to update all that stuff, but when it's done, let me know and we can refresh. Yeah. Um, luckily, you got some discussion items to take some time. Right. So next item is 2A um, exchange student feedback. Uh, Mr. Stefani. Yes, uh, before I actually get to that, I, I just opened it up and uh, um, Ms. Fox, while you're, while you're in there, uh, the, the, the student's first name uh, is misspelled in the agenda. If you could, I, I think she probably is great. Uh, but I think her name. I think her name is Greta. Uh, so I think we could, uh, we could just make that technical correction. That that would be great. Um, actually, uh, at this time, I, I'd like to uh, um, uh, turn it over to uh, Mr. Hoffman, uh, who made the request uh, to uh, have an exchange to uh, provide feedback to the board at, at this meeting and. Let him lead the introduction. Well, um, and then if you want to hand it off, you can. <laughs> I have a great colleague right next door, Mrs. Suter, um, that uh, is a phenomenal person. Um, has take, <clears throat> sorry, um, taken on on an incredible role, helping out with an exchange student, um, and she would like to introduce her. Hey. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> if I may, my name is Heather Brown, and I thank you for this opportunity to come here this evening and speak to you all. And I am the area representative with International Student Exchange, which is a J-1 student visa program, which allows high school exchange students to come to the United States and attend wonderful schools such as Tip City. And so I'm very grateful, very appreciative to the school board for allowing students to come to your school. I believe it's a benefit to the community, to the students, and to the gracious host families who receive them into their home. Uh, this year, I do have a student, Greta Schaefer, who is attending Tip City, and she has been received into the home of Duffy and Amy Suter, who you're probably very familiar with as a staff member, and um, her husband is a pivotal role in the community out there. <laughs> So he, he, he's here as a host parent, not a, a, as an official <laughs> policeman tonight. That's intimidating or anything here. Um, but um, I'm very thankful to the wonderful families in the community that open their homes to receive these students, to allow them to truly live and realize a dream that they have to come, live in an American home, 
study at a, a local high school. They see on TV, on movies, what it's like to go to school in America. They'll come and say, it's just like high school musical, you know, just all the spirit <laughs> that we have in our school systems. I am from Dart County myself. I have been doing the exchange program for over 20 years, mostly placing students in Dart County, but I do cross over into Miami and other counties every now and then. So um, I would like to say thank you uh, formally to Duffy and Amy for receiving Greta into their home. And um, if Greta may have an opportunity, she would just like to address the board herself as well. Yeah, um, hi, I, I'm, I'm Greta. And uh, I would just like to say uh, thank you for this opportunity for letting me be here because I got my family very um, spontaneous. I, I got my host family six days before I got here. And I am very happy that I got the opportunity to go to the school. I had a lot of great opportunities to go to um, different events. I visited most of the football games and found a great friend group there. And so, yeah, I just want to say Thank you very much to allowing students to come to your school. Thank you. Also, thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Suter because not only did she get to Greta, is it Greta? Yeah, Greta got the experience of. American school. She got the experience of an American teacher mm -hmm. and the experience of an American police officer. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of a lot of bang there. So also Greta, what part of Germany are you from? I'm from like the middle of Germany and my town's so small that like nobody knows it, but I live <laughs> like um an hour northern of Frankfurt, if you know where that is. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Thank you. It's like small event tips, so. <laughs> Glad you had the opportunity. When? Sorry, I can't see. Oh, when do you leave Ohio? I leave probably on June fourth. Okay, so just graduation and then right after, pretty much. Probably, yeah. <laughs> we'll enjoy it. Yeah, I, I really do. I really enjoy it. That's wonderful. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you also for, uh, I think you're probably giving us a little bit of culture as well to mm -hmm. learn about your customs and how you do things in Germany. I think it's a great, a great program. Thank you to the series as well. Next item is 2B, curriculum maps and standards for 2023-2024 school year. Yes, uh, Mrs. Scott is here. Uh, and she has a uh, team of uh, folks to uh, uh, present uh, information about uh, curriculum maps and standards for uh, next school year. Scott? Thanks, Mr. Savani. During curriculum review this year, I worked with following departments, family and consumer science, business, technology, and school counseling. The members of this year's committee include Jessica Ralston, Rita Potter, Dara Hardiman, Amanda Jessup, Chad Kuhn, Pam Staub, Rachel Everhart, Hannah Gress, Brett Elliott, Crystal Niekamp, Susan Eichenauer, Christine Baker, and Kelly Smith. During our curriculum meetings, the teachers reviewed their content standards, discussed instru instructional strategies and resources, and assessments for student learning. Our family and consumer science department and business departments use career technical standards to identify student learning outcomes. As career tech certified teachers, they also have the opportunity to apply for state funding in order to help with supplies and equipment. We're excited that Jim Kitchen will be earning his career tech certification in the coming months and that his home building course will also be eligible for state funding. The staff members in these elective courses believe in offering authentic learning opportunities for students and for preparing the students to be college and career ready. I've been able to visit many of their classrooms this year and observe students making fruit pizza and learn about kitchen safety, watch students share more about Filipino culture and global foods, 
and observe students coding and digital editing in their technology courses. In fifth grade, students were using iPads to code their Sphero balls in Mrs. Jessup's Maze Challenge, which was incredible. In these hands-on classrooms, students were engaged and excited to learn. I've also been fortunate to work with the school counseling department. This group shares a common goal of helping students become successful in their academics and in their life. The school counselors strive to help each student develop the necessary skills for future success. They have taken on many challenges in their profession regarding student mental health, additional state mandates, and graduation requirements. The school counselors have been integral to the implementation of School Links, our new college and career readiness platform, and the health education requirements. I'm appreciative to the entire curriculum team for their work this year. Thank you. Now I would like to introduce Jessica Ralston, who will share more about the Family and Consumer Science Department. Good evening. Um, I will be discussing the Family and Consumer Science Department. Our statement of purpose is as follows. Family and Consumer Sciences, or FCS, teaches life skills. It is the comprehensive body of tasks, research, and knowledge to help students make informed decisions about their well-being, build healthy relationships, and cultivate the resourcefulness that is necessary to achieve essential life skills. Our department plays a vital role in developing responsible and respectful citizens who will become successful and interactive members of society. During the duration of this school year, we worked on vertical alignment through our curriculum uh, between the junior high and the high school, including personal finance, career connections, Ohio means jobs, American and global cuisine, nutrition and wellness, fashion design, and interior design, and FCCLA. On the following slide, uh, there is a showing of vertical alignment between the high school and junior high in food safety and sanitation in each of the cooking classes that we teach at both high school and junior high, uh, we have to cover food safety and sanitation. Um, the family consumer science improvements that we have made this year include at the high school level, business university. This is a STEM based experience for fashion and interiors where students can develop a product and open a storefront on the computer. The high school also will be acquiring a new embroidery machines. Students will have the opportunity to learn different mediums of fashion and interiors with the machines. The high school is also working on personal finance lab, budgeting, and stock market sims, which will allow students real life experience and discover the stock market all while learning about finance. At the junior high, we are working on updating kitchen equipment and utensils that will be updated and replaced due to normal wear and tear. A new course, American Cuisine, has been added to give the students more electives to choose from. There are three sections of this offered each semester. And lastly, School Links is a new program being added to organize students, career interests, skills, college, and career paths. And this will follow them all through high school. And next up to talk is Sarah. Uh, the statement of purpose for the business department, which is what I represent, the business department embraces the opportunity for students to develop economic and financial literacies essential to success in adult life. Through a host of courses and real world applications, our students will cultivate the leadership and communication skills to become successful and productive citizens. We also have a demonstrative uh, sample map listed in the PowerPoint. And then when we look at our improvements, um, important to note that our curriculum this year at the state level is going through revision. Several of the courses are complete. Um, I get to be part of that revision process review here in a few weeks. Um, but we did bring on Business University on our side. Uh, we utilize sports and entertainment marketing as well as introduction to business. Um, we also have uh, added a marketing technology, which has just increased. Um, if we look at it, our, our numbers are just growing, 300% growth from this year to next. Um, we are hoping to add four additional studio cameras and six Adobe editing systems. 
as well as rework the current space where we are in to provide them with the editing area, the directing area, and the studio area without making any additional modifications. Um, we have, she mentioned school links, which is super exciting for us. Uh, bringing that on board helps with our career connections class, which is something that became a requirement last year for all freshmen entering the school. That allows us to track the Ohio Needs Jobs Readiness Program and the 14 skills that the students must earn. We utilize uh, one skill every week and we focus on that. We bring in guest speakers from around the community. So if anyone has any friends that love to speak in front of students, we would love to invite them in. They only have to do it one period because we record it with the marketing technology kids. And then we have it available immediately for the classes that follow that because sometimes a business professional doesn't have a whole day to give us to yeah. be a guest speaker. So we try to make it as user-friendly as possible. Um, let's see, we're also gonna use school links now, making it financially more feasible for us, to do resumes. Um, there actually is a portal portion of it that allows the students to log in, enter their data, and it will formulate it for them in a standardized layout. Uh, which will be effective for us. On the 19th of April, we will be kicking off our spring mock interview series. The students will spend about two hours, all 127 of them, um, meeting with area professionals. Right now I have about 15 on board. We hope to have 30. And we basically do speed interviewing. The students will move from table to table. Uh, they will spend four to six minutes with each business professional and they will ask questions or be asked questions similar to that of an interview. We did it in the fall. It was extremely successful. The students loved it, even those that told me they were going to skip school so they didn't have to do it because they were scared. <laughs> but when we explained to them, this is safe. You're in a safe environment. These people all want to help you learn and make it easy for you when you go out into the real world. In my opinion, probably the best thing that we added to Career Connections is this experience. It's a lot of work, um, and but the kids do find a lot of value in it and appreciate it when it's over. Um, so that's about to happen also for Career Connections. Um, we are looking at Pathful, it's on our request list. It's a program that will allow the students to experience various careers. I think there are 300 on board right now in this program, but it's not so much of just a video uh, demonstrating a day in a life in a job, but it gives follow-up videos that allow students to maybe use their inquiry mind. So they're gonna have extra questions from what they've seen and these follow-up videos are really a question and answer session with the employee about things that hopefully the students are inquiring about as well. Um, really excited about that. There's also a whole life skills section where there's over 600 videos, how to, how to change a tire, how to yeah. unplug a drain, how to um, basic life skills, how to start your resume, how to meet an adult, how to get a loan, how to research getting insurance. So all those things um, that we just kind of fell into, probably at least I know I did several years ago, um, gives them an opportunity to do that research. Uh, um, and then I wanna to touch on Business Professionals of America is a career tech student organization. And as career tech programs that receive career tech funding, we are required to be active members in the program. To be active means that you are participating in competitions, you are running for office, et cetera. So a Business Professionals of America is something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, we had 28 students that competed regionally. We had a team of six and an individual that made it to state, that was exciting. Um, our Parley Pro team took fourth in the state, which was super exciting. Just missing nationals for that team by one. Um, so they were sad, but yet a great experience. It's something you prepare for for a long time. They worked every week uh, to be ready to do that. And then I had a an IT technology student who was actually in this Dobbs class that was able to sit down. He took a test. And he took second in our region, which landed him a shot at going to state. He did a great job. Someone who had never left the Tip City area, never been to a nice restaurant, never been to a hotel. And this was an experience unlike anything for him. And he was super, super appreciative that he was able to make that happen. So those are, those are the kind of themes. Um, business professionals focuses on making leaders. Um, we were lucky enough to be invited by Pitch Piqua, uh, the Piqua Foundation, to serve as 
um, their tabulation team for the biggest events of their year. And, and I thought that was quite an honor that six kids from Tishtady, Ohio, were asked to manage a huge event that brought in $65,000, dollars $75,000 that they gave away to a nonprofit. So lots of cool things happening. Um, and our uh, FCS program, they're involved with FCCLA, also a CTSO. Uh, we have students that made it to state for that organization as well. So being active is important. It's something that's tracked on our grade card. And I'm just excited that the kids love it. And well, I am going to- Before you pass the mic, go ahead and talk about the, the VIP student for just a second. So I, I have a VIP student. She couldn't make it tonight because she's running on a track meet. Uh, her name is Kaylin Schultz. Her mom is here, Miss Melissa. Um, she is a 10th grader. And uh, last year, she, along with one other student, came to me when I started talking about BPA, and they said, we want to make this happen. We think this will be great for our school. And so with their help, we grew the organization fairly quickly. And um, Kaylin stepped out as a leader, in my opinion, and so uh, gave her some opportunities to be a part of a leadership training that I offered. Um, she became uh, an officer last year for our chapter. This year, she's an officer at the regional level. She uh, campaigned and made it last year to become a, a state level officer. So she she's just a go getter. And um, we heard last week while we were on spring break, so exciting that uh, she had been chosen from all of the candidates in the state of Ohio to represent the state of Ohio as our uh, national officer candidate. So there are two coming from the state of Ohio, and we are excited. <laughs> So she she will do crazy things there, and, she, and she's ready. And and I I mean I told her I told her mom I said this is a long shot. She's a sophomore, um, but she really pulled all the stops out. Her presentation package was outstanding. Her video was outstanding, and there really was no question. We did have two candidates from our school that wanted to go at the national level. Um, and they, the second candidate got great feedback for next year, but he's also a sophomore. Yeah. So plenty of opportunity in the future. Now Kaylin is deep in the trenches, getting her speech <laughs> ready, getting her giveaways ready. It's a true election. So much like you all did, you canvassed the public, you promoted yourself, you spoke to people, you told them what you would do. That's exactly what she will be doing when the campaign uh, gates open for her. So. She gets to take one campaign uh, manager with her as well, and that will be Taylor Galvez. And, and that's to earn what title, what position? National Officer for Business Professionals of America. There'll be six. Currently, we have 48,000 members, 8,868 come from the state of Ohio. So there could be candidates from all over, including uh, Ohio, including Hawaii, and we have uh, students that are actually in other countries that compete as well. So super exciting that puts our little pin on the national map. How is that funded? I'm just curious. And you mentioned the student the first time like in a hotel rest. Mm -hmm. Where is that funding coming from? Um, the, the funds for the students portion comes from student fundraising. So this year for state, we had a parent that came forward who was seeing the great things that were happening because their child was involved, local business, and he said he would match funds. Uh, so that's really how we got the kids there. Uh, other funds come from career tech educational funding, like for the advisor's travel or the advisor's mm -hmm. registration, things like that. <laughs> there, there aren't many times where, where tears happen in like curriculum presentations. <laughs> we, we, we were able to make that happen. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to introduce the <laughs> 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 IT and all the exciting stuff. Thank you, Mira. Um, I'll start out on uh, reading the uh, statement of purpose for our technology department. Uh, the technology department recognizes that technology is a central aspect of students and adult lives. Our students will develop the technological competence 
and knowledge of various computer systems, and not only about the systems, but the skills to use them, and how to perform in the diverse technological sector in the global economy. So we've worked really hard um, with our vertical alignment to uh, the three school buildings. And we really focus on four main areas. The first is computer programming. So at the intermediate level, uh, they start out using our code. And then in the middle school, we have a coding program called code.org. That's amazing. And uh, they also are using uh, skills in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then when they come to the high school, we build on those skills. We use code HS. And we also do some HTML, JavaScript, CSS, but we also move into um, C++ and a little bit of Python. Uh, another area that we focus our alignment on is IoT, so it's Internet of Things. You know, those are all around us. Um, it's important that uh, students learn to engage in those things in a safe and secure way while using their skills that they're learning in their programming classes. And so we have Legos and uh, the Spiro uh, Volt Robotics kits that we use. We've got drones. We have micro bits and Raspberry Pis and some AR VR technologies to engage our students. Another area um, that's a big focus is the design process. We really focus on teaching the creative process, letting the students um, pick a challenge and be able to create multiple solutions and test those solutions. And um, I've listed some of the uh, courses and some of the projects that we do to promote that podcasting, uh, graphics design and photo design, editing, 3D design, website development. Uh, all of that leads into the high school courses, the systems analysis and design course that we have, uh, AP Computer Science Principles. Uh, we're adding that as a new course next year. We're real excited about that one. And our networking and IT fundamentals. And then lastly, our uh, fourth area of alignment is our computer applications, where students start out with the Google applications and then they work into Microsoft. Uh, and databases and uh, you know, access SQL flowcharts and algorithms. Uh, the next slide just shows our vertical alignment a little bit more clearly uh, by showing two maps. One where they start at the intermediate level with basic terminologies and programming and where they can land at the high school level in C++ coding. And then uh, lastly, our technology technology improvements this year, uh, we have a, a great technology club that's now being offered at the intermediate school. Uh, we have a lot of uh, technology innovative tools now with iPads and Chromebooks, Smartbooks, uh, Lego robotics and Sphero kits, drones, some of the things I had mentioned earlier. We have an exciting new CS and Clear early IT program that we offer uh, via College Credit Plus. We also offer, in cooperation with Sinclair, the short-term IT certification through College Credit Plus. And I had mentioned the new AP course, and uh, we really tried to um, make sure that our digital safety and our cybersecurity content uh, remains up to date for all of our students. And at this time, I would like to introduce uh, Rachel Everhart with our counseling department. Hi, my name is Rachel Everhart. I'm one of the high school counselors. Um, this year, the K-12 counselors met and worked on our comprehensive school counseling plan, which includes our statement of purpose, which reads, the school counseling department sets the foundation for students to reach their maximum potential for individual, social, academic, and career success. Students will be responsible members of a global society who respect themselves and others by showing integrity, flexible thinking, and perseverance. The next slide will show our school counseling standards. These are the five standards that align with the American School Counselor Association. These standards are what we focused on when creating our comprehensive school counseling plan, in which we will be talking about tonight. Okay, academic success, career preparation, and behavior wellness, they all align with the five standards on the previous slide. The district school counseling department collaborates with parents, teachers, and administrators to ensure all students succeed in the classroom. 
We introduce students to careers at all grade levels so they graduate with an idea and a plan on what career field they want to enter. We also work with students individually regarding emotional and social concerns. We have a value partnership with New Creation Counseling whom we refer students to when additional support is needed. So Brett Elliott and Hannah Gress are our K through five counselors. They each have new additions to their family, so they cannot be here tonight. So I'm taking one for the team, <laughs> and I'm going to present their <laughs> curriculum. Never been a K through five counselor, but here we go. So Brett and Hannah, they do a great job of providing supports for students to attain their learning goals. They are involved in the MTSS process, and they introduce students to potential careers. Brett and Hannah also collaborate with teachers and parents to provide individual and group counseling as needed. They refer students to outside services when needed as well. They also provide classroom lessons on tip values, such as being respectful and responsible and having integrity. Some of their highlights, um, Brett and Hannah are very proud to be part of the PBIS team and rewarding students for their positive behavior. LG Ball's Career Day involves parents and local businesses in our community in our schools. Now I'd like to introduce Crystal Nika to discuss today's new middle school. Hi, so um, talking about academic support at the middle school level, uh, our goal is to meet struggling students where they are and then help to identify and remove barriers that are keeping them from their learning. So um, often that's done through a collaborative team approach, meeting with parents, teachers, other stakeholders. Um, you know, we're using the MTSS uh, structure to do that. And then with the team, we develop a plan to best support our students. It can be a variety of, of plans as opposed to some of those up there. Um, and then we also want to help identify resources and services to best support our students and their families as well. Um, and then once plans are in place, we're checking in with students regularly to help monitor their progress and to make any adjustments as needed. Um, we're also working to better support students who are at or above target because we have a lot of those students. Uh, one change that we made this year was to uh, begin offering the pre-ACT 8-9 to the eighth graders. Previously, we had offered the PSAT, but um, this was a, a way that we could better align with what the test that they were taking in high school so that when they're trying to look at data, um, that will help them to best monitor progress and make adjustments. So, um, and just have that consistent data. Okay. So for career exploration and support, um, our goal is to expand student knowledge of possible career options and offer more opportunities specifically at the middle school level to explore the careers that are interesting to our students. Um, so we're doing that by utilizing different opportunities in our, um, in our community, in our county. Um, we are using school links. So we are really um, doing a push to use that in the middle school level through the FCS classes um, and through some in-class guidance. And then um, the, Forward thinking plan is to create more opportunities during school for students to learn about careers in our area through parent and community partnerships. So much like we would have, um, we would have college um, advisors come in to speak about their colleges to high school students, we are thinking we would have people come in to talk about their careers at the middle school level to try and um, just widen their knowledge of what's available. Okay. Uh, social emotional support. Um, our goal is to help facilitate a safe and inclusive school culture for all students. So part of that that we've worked towards this year is identifying any gaps and then creating opportunities for greater student involvement in school. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success through the new gaming club that we began and, and other activities. Susan and I were actually um, we had 24 students at school today. We were doing cake boss competition right before we came here. So, yes, yeah, so Susan was like cleaning fondant out of her hair. <laughs> Good times. Um, so, uh, but we. <laughs> um, so, look for those pictures on social media coming soon. Uh, but we continue to meet with students who need additional support and partner with new creations inside the building, um, also making outside referrals as necessary. And then um, we also began bringing a rabbit in uh, to help reduce stress in our building for students and staff. So just a 
another little stress relief. Okay. And then highlights for the year. Um, this year, we're very proud of several initiatives we ran both in our building and through community engagement. Uh, we started the year by championing kindness at TMS, and we also ran a self-care challenge um, at the beginning of the year in January. We co-facilitated several initiatives through our new Devil Squad. Um, and that involved welcoming new students, spreading holiday cheer, donating food, <clears throat> volunteering um, at a local pet sanctuary, um, and then some random acts of kindness at TMS too. So, um, and we also have a beautiful new calming space for all of our students to use and enjoy thanks to a grant that we received. Right. And now Rachel will talk about the high school. Me again? Okay. So these are some of the things the high school counselors do to support academic success at THS. There are three high school counselors and we are broken up by alphabet. So we have the same students <coughs> all four years. So we really get to know them. We meet with our students once a year and go over grade level appropriate information, such as what they can be doing within that school year to help them be successful. We also go over where they stand for graduation and what requirements they still need to meet. Every senior parent gets an email on where their student stands for graduation and things we talked about with their student in their senior meeting. If their student is, is at risk for not graduating, we inform them of our plan on how we will get them graduated. College and Career Signing Day is a day we celebrate our seniors and the path they have chosen to pursue after high school. We recognize that path will look different for everyone, whether it's a trade school, two-year or four-year college or university military, workforce, apprenticeship, or a gap year. We believe all paths should be recognized and celebrated. We also organize all of the high school state testing that tie into graduation requirements. We offer a FAFSA night where parents and students can come receive help completing the FAFSA uh, with a FAFSA rep from Wright State University. Students do not need to be attending Wright State to come and receive help filling out the FAFSA. We also offer local scholarships. So we are extremely grateful for our local organizations that award our students thousands of dollars each year in scholarships. This money is life-changing for our students and we appreciate their continuous support of our students. So for career exploration, all sophomores have an opportunity to take the CTC field trip. The CTC is our um, career vocational school. They have the opportunity to apply to CTC to attend there their junior and senior year. We have 60 kids there now and 47 sophomores just got accepted this year to attend their junior and senior year. So everyone else talked about school links, so I might as well as too. Um, we do use school links a lot throughout the district. Um, just like Sarah Hardiman said in the Career Connections class, uh, school links is a great way for students to research careers and colleges. Um, they can research careers and they can find out what state that career is in demand, um, how much money they make, the you know skills that they're going to need to be successful in that career, and what major that they need to um, pursue for that career. They can also research colleges. So if they already know what major they want to go into, they can type in that major and it will bring up all of the universities and colleges that offer that. So it's a great resource for our students. Um, they can also take assessments to see what career would fit their personality and interest. Um, us counselors, we send transcripts to colleges through schoolings and teachers use schoolings to send their letters of recommendation. Schoolings also helps us track graduation seals and graduation plans. Um, students need two graduation seals in order to graduate high school. There's 12 seals that they can earn total. They only need two to graduate. However, most of our students will earn five to seven or more seals. So that's a lot to track. Um, and we will be introducing parent access to school links in the fall. So we're excited about that. We also offer pre-apprenticeships with the Tip City Police Department, Stop Manufacturing, and our IT department. We value our partnership with New Creation Counseling. They do a great job with our students who need additional mental health support. We have 42 high school students currently receiving their services. 
We also have Hope Squad. Hope Squad empowers students to build meaningful connections with their peers and to create a culture of caring and support within the school and the community and within themselves. Our Hope Squad is currently working on activities for Hope Week at the end of April, which is a national Hope Squad event. This week helps raise awareness and reduces the stigma of mental health. This program reminds students that they matter and their peers are there for them if they need someone to talk to. So some of the highlights for this year, um, we started coffee with the counselors at Grounds for Pleasure. We hosted one each semester. Uh, this gave the parents just the opportunity to stop by, ask us general questions while enjoying a cup of coffee and not in the school setting. We have a counselor section in Mr. Barnes' weekly email to update parents with news from the counseling department and what students should be doing or paying attention to. Um, we also met with Erin McKenzie. Don Scott got us hooked up with her. She's a college admissions consultant for some PD. She's very helpful. Um, and she helped us create this calendar on the next slide. I know you probably can't read that, but it is on our website. Um, this just breaks down what each grade level is going to be doing and focusing on each month throughout the school year. And hopefully I can, hopefully Pam Stott can help me make the links accessible. To, Absolutely. Yeah. So this concludes our curriculum presentations. Thank you for your time. And I'll turn it back over to Don Scott. Thanks, Rachel. Nice calendar. Yeah, thank you. Oh, can I get yeah. Yeah. Are you able to do Thank you, everybody. Okay. At this time, does the board have any questions for the presenters or me? Thank you. I have an idea. Yeah. I, I got I'm ready. Just yeah. You have to well, try with a problem. I'm not very savvy. <laughs> I am, and I'm not real tech and you know savvy and literate. And all, but I like to be better than what I know. You know. And so when you were talking about, I think it was yeah, Mrs. Staub was talking about uh, Internet of Things and raspberries and all this stuff and I'm like, oh, what? but these students are probably pretty skilled i was thinking about like what if you i don't know just well thought. you had a time frame of a month or week whatever where the seniors or somebody who wants to learn and, and get up you know advance their technology or start their technology ability to they could learn from the students. If the students could help introduce any of that, and what I'm thinking is that it it's just it's like an, this could be such a win-win for the students, Thank and you. then also, and I don't mean just elderly. I I would I could come if I you know had the time it fit in, and mm -hmm. uh, although technically I'm a senior, but <laughs> I like to, you know, but I mean I would come and. Uh, and, and then also the, the people coming learn, and then you also help educate your public about what the students are doing when it comes to helping support the schools, you know, for your levies and the like. I just think that it, I'm sure there's a lot of things that need to be ironed out, you know, safety and all that, but I'm just saying, wouldn't that be cool mm -hmm. to have that sort of collaborative mm -hmm. the, the young teaching or the, the young experience teaching that not so experienced. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I would probably go. Okay. You could make it an elective. You could make it like a mentoring where the kid gets like a mentoring credit or some kind of mentoring. See, Part of the, see, I mean, mentoring. there's a lot of yeah. different spinoffs. I think you could have or that. Leadership, mentoring, or leadership. A lot of different mm -hmm. spinoffs. Okay. But I mean, when I was hearing Mrs. Stout talking about all these words, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and there's so, I sat down with one of Mrs. Stout's students the other day. And he was showing me his coding, and it's phenomenal what they can do. I mean, mm -hmm. so it's it's a great idea. And just the basics. I mean, they don't have to show off all that fantastic. <laughs> just the introduction <laughs> to help get people. You know. 
Yeah. You can teach parents that have a flashlight off their iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to call my kids, like, how do I turn the flashlight on? Just the basics. We're very minimal. <laughs> oh, it's going to be so easy. It's a great idea. Your flashlight will be on for three days until your kids come home from school. Mm -hmm. It's a great idea. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> It's a good one, Ian. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good. I just wanted to say, well, I love hearing all this stuff because you know I'm not in the classroom anymore, but I this I love it. Mm -hmm. I love hearing your collaboration and how you guys are working together and coming up with ideas, and you're always willing to go above and beyond for our students. And I, as a parent, appreciate it more than you know. The mock interviews. She did not want to do them at all. I know. I'm at sorry. All. You already know who my kid is. Um, she was not interested in it. But I will tell you, when we sat in the car that night and she talked to me about it and getting to meet um, Dr. Tuttle Huff and her mm -hmm. having those conversations with her, she was so excited that she got to do that and, and she got to talk about herself and open up a little bit more. So thank you for doing that because that's going to go a long way mm -hmm. for all of these kids to have that ability to do that. Um, just all the stuff you guys are doing in general, life skills are so important. And I just feel like that's been skipped over even when we were kids. And so thank you for going above and beyond for our kids. I really appreciate it. So one thing you talked about interviewing, and that's something not all of our students have parents that maybe have, you know, interviewing type skills or, you know, to pass on. So when we have other people that are, as parents, when you have other kids at your home, kids don't like to listen to their own parent, but they'll listen to somebody else's parent. Sure. You know, yeah, even if like, it's not even the same type of, like, really? But they do. And one super important thing is kids nowadays, just the basic handshake is missing. It's like the firm, firming and shake, look in the eye. Mm -hmm. And I love that you're teaching those types of things. And when you go in to interview, this sounds basic, turn your cell phone off, like I always do at a meeting. And then also you don't put your personal belongings on your interviewer's desk. Sure. That is their personal space. Sure. So just, I'm sure you have a million of these type little things, <laughs> but yeah. you know, I'm so grateful that we have a class where the, all of our students are now getting this type of information because you, even at McDonald's, you have to interview. I don't care if it's McDonald's or Procter & Gamble. It is an interview, and you treat everybody the same. The handshake, the desk is the personal space. You know, present yourself. You don't wear holy jeans. But mm -hmm. kids nowadays, they just, if, unless they see it on TikTok, their brains don't get this right. information. I don't think there's a TikTok about interviewing etiquette yet. Maybe we should make We should do that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, tie it all together, like Anne's idea, tie it all together. <laughs> but, Dick, but anyway, so yeah, well, all of these are important life skills for sure, definitely. In your class, you know, being newer in, in what you're bringing, I think that kids are really starting to talk about it and tell other kids and all of this is just, you know, growing in a positive way, very positive. Nice. I would just, you know, I, I'm impressed by everything that you're doing, and especially in the technology area. Um, the only thing that was missing, there was one thing I kept looking for and thought maybe it was missing. But, um, we did talk about the business aspect a little bit, but I didn't see any tax courses in there. And I thought if you could offer a tax course so I could hire these kids to but I, I do think that that is important the, the personal finance too you know because I you know unfortunately see so many older people that um we're not up to date with the tech stuff like you know like what we're talking about but also there's a lot of older people that don't pay attention to their budget, don't know how to budget. You've got to expose them at that age. And I think it's good that you're doing that. So that's going to pay off in the long run. But thank you for everything you're doing. It's amazing. Uh, I, excellent presentation. Um, so many amazing things you're doing and, and stories you share with us and things that I know just from having kids in school. It's pretty incredible what you guys are able to achieve, um, especially on the technology side, 
um, on the counseling side. Um, you know, my kids are more emotionally aware and able to communicate feelings in a productive manner than some adults. It's incredible and the way they talk to each other. And, and it's, it's just wild that they're able to, to just communicate the way they do. And, you know, I, yeah, it's, I know it's because of what you're doing, because it's not, it's, this is them together talking, you know, like, you know, I watch these kids play and then the way they talk about just taking turns and things like that, you know, it's just incredible. I, I, I don't know what you guys are doing, but keep it up. <laughs> um, the, the, you know, the successes you've had also, you know, especially, I keep saying especially, I don't mean that because there's no especially, you're all awesome. Um, but like, you know, highlights that, that were presented tonight, like the BPA, you know, it's just incredible. And that shows just, just, I mean, not only, you know, Tip City, but parents, students, and, and organizational. It's just, it all has to come together and you, you, you're you all doing it. It's incredible. Brett, thank you for everything you're doing. Anyone else? Next item is 2C course amendment. Scott? Um, I would like to propose a change to the course of study for the high school. Um, originally, it was advanced physics. And with our new hire, we would like to move that to AP Physics 1. Um, historically, for the last several years, and that's why I kept Rachel here, she has a longer history than I do. Um, the last several years, it's been taught as advanced physics with elements from AP Physics 1 and 2. Our new staff member would like to move that to AP Physics 1 as he is trying to build the AP program. So AP Physics 1, the students would have an opportunity to earn college credit. He would follow the college board syllabus and attend training um, at an institute. He's hoping to eventually add AP Physics 2 as well once the program is built. The decision years ago, and I've received a lot of history now on, on AP Physics, that the course was AP Physics before it took high school, but then College Board split it into AP Physics 1 and 2, and the current teacher wanted to combine elements of both, which, which is fine, and it's been at an advanced level, but the students haven't had the opportunity to take the AP exam in May from College Board and earn college credit. This course, following the College Board curriculum, the students would have an a, opportunity to earn a college credit in May with the passing score in, on the AP Physics exam. So that's the change. And the course description reflects the college board course description. Um, and the prereqs are pretty standard. So that is the that's the proposal of the change from advanced physics to AP physics one. Any questions about that? Rachel's here. <coughs> is this the core? And, and that's in-house. This, this is internal, correct. Correct. So how many, roughly, how many kids are taking advanced? placement physics. Not well, not. for next year, I'm going to choose right here. For next year, we have 11 students who would be taking AP Physics 1. Oh, the new course, I yes. didn't hear you. So, I'm sorry. Well, no, no, it's oh. not your fault. Go ahead. Well, I, for, for next year, because scheduling's already taken place, and that's why we're coming later, not knowing who we we're going to hire, but now 11 students, and Ms. Everhart has confirmed, will be enrolled in AP Physics 1. That's, that's, yeah. That's, that's How many are this year? Seven. Yes. In, advance. in advance. Yeah, not many people take that class. Yeah. So, wow. Well, there's no incentive right now. And I checked with the students who thought they were signing up for advanced physics. I told them that we were going to propose this course change. Um, it would benefit the students because now they're going to have AP physics. They're going to have the letters AP, which colleges and universities um, worldwide recognize. They know the rigor and they know the curriculum of College Board. They will also benefit receiving more weight on their GPA. With it being advanced physics right now, they only receive a half of weight um, per semester. With the change for AP, they will receive a full point when added to their GPA. So it will benefit the students. And what year do they typically start? Junior or senior? Junior or senior. senior. Okay, correct. 
and our new teacher is very excited to teach the course. All the students who are registered for the course for next year will be seniors. Yes. No, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, so my question will be this. So if we're not teaching the AP Physics 2 coursework, you know, with the 11 seniors that are going to be for coming up, what if you have a kid that wants to work at NASA, you know, a student that wants to be a doctor? I feel like we are doing a disservice to those kids because they're, I don't know how to say this in a polite way, we need all the science we can get mm -hmm. at TIP schools. Mm -hmm. When we see these high achieving kids take the ACT, there are certain categories that our TIP students don't typically do well in, and science has always been one of those categories. Um, math and English are typically high, and we don't do well as a school in science. So now we're taking AP Physics 2 curriculum away from these 11 seniors who might want to be an astrophysicist, a doctor. I mean, I don't know. I don't know these kids. I don't like that. These aren't my students, but if I, if I were a parent, I would be very concerned. They're only, the way I understand, I talk, and I talked to Mr. Brown about okay. what he teaches. There's just a couple elements. So AP Physics 1 has eight units. AP Physics 2 has eight or nine units. He's only he just mixes them. Correct. And okay. neither one is being taught in their entirety gotcha. for the student to have the opportunity for the college credit. Okay. So those 11 students would have more opportunity to go through the eight units in AP Physics 1 for an opportunity okay. than if they, you know, with a three, four, or five, that student could then enroll into the next physics course, which are different numbers depending upon the university. But it would at least get them on the pathway. There are, though, eventual, there are other pathways in AP Physics, because I looked into it, where if we add AP Physics 2, that is now two upper level physics courses. And then there's a potential in my vision planning, <laughs> there's a potential AP Physics C, and that's your mechanical physics, which are for your future engineers. Right. So there's a potential there to really start to build the AP Physics program, but most schools and talking to area schools, they start with AP Physics 1. So we thought for next year, with the 11 students we have enrolled, this would be a good place to start. Okay. Because my, my, my second, my most obvious okay. question would be, you know, this was an internal hire. So then I would say, well, why did we hire a candidate, a staff member who couldn't teach the coursework? So that would be, as a board member, another concern of mine. You know, if you don't have an appropriate internal candidate, then you get an external candidate. So I don't want to get into a situation where we're hiring internal candidates where it really isn't a great fit. And now it's, oh, this isn't going to work. Let's change the coursework. I don't feel like that's servicing our, our students at all. The current hire, the internal hire, has his, I'll have Dr. Tuttle have jump in if she needs to, but has his master's degree in science. science. He's also doing the AP course of science. And he does. So anyone who goes to the AP Institute who's certified in that area, because I was an AP teacher, you can go to the Institute. It's a four or five day workshop, depending upon the area. And that's when you get your certification and receive your training. This person has to me additional certification because he's, he has his master's in science okay. most ap teachers have their general certification in science and then go to the ap institute okay. so he has his master's in science and then we'll be attending the four-day training okay so i just think maybe it was confusing the way you stated it because you said we're not you made it sound like we're not teaching the ap physics to work anymore because that's the way it is currently be done currently being done so that's that's not sorry. Yeah, right. So, sorry. I, so I'm thinking we hired an unqualified person. Mm -hmm. And as a board member, that gets into my area of, you know what I'm saying? Highly qualified. Yeah. He's high. Yeah. But I know him. I don't, yeah. I don't just, I'm yeah. not just highly, you know, qualified. disagree with that. Yeah. So it just sounds like it. And Mr. Brown, I mean, he's been doing, it's, it's been, a, it's great. Oh, yeah. He's been there forever. Like, Mr. Yeah. Brown, it's been a great course. He just, when the bifurcation took place years ago, he still wanted to do some elements of both. Gotcha. And the college board made the decision with all of the units in physics, they wanted it to be a two-year process because gotcha. there's so much to teach. Okay. So. Yep. Very familiar with the course. Thank you. Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. So is the long-term plan like for juniors to be able to take one and then seniors to take two? Is that kind of where you guys are heading? Okay. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> I love that idea. I'm just, yes. just curious if that was the long-term yep. plan. Okay. Cool. And then another question, sorry. How many, how much science do they have to have to fit into like that category to be able to take it? Like, 
do they already need to be taking a certain path to get there? The a prereqs for an algebra-based physics course, which AP Physics 1 and 2 are both algebra-based, based, um, are CP Chem and CP Algebra 2. Okay, so those are your two prereqs, which for many of our kids, sophomore year. Yes, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. What else? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. When, my question are, when, when does the board have to make a decision on this? We, we would put it on, we wanted conversation today and discussion, and then we would put it on for approval of this modification on the April 24th meeting. And if you guys have any more questions, please reach out to me and I will get you answers. I, 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 I before, sorry. Um, have you um, talked to to Mr. Moran and Mr. Stefanik about all this? That yeah. They're all on board. Mr. Stefanik, yes. yes. And then I okay. If I'm you don't know, that's okay. I don't want. He's to sitting here. Right. I was going to say, Mr. Moran, are you good with AP physics? Well, he, I don't want to put him on the spot. The reason I think for us in making that because scheduling takes place so early, as all the board members know, mm -hmm. and the new hire, we wanted to make sure the students were okay, and that's why Miss Everhart has met with all the kids, and they're they're excited for the opportunity to earn college credit. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, to me, it makes a lot of sense. You're be teaching uh, the same things, just mm -hmm. more detail, which yes. I think yes. helps you get you ready for college, yes. and you get college credit for it, which is a bonus because then it helps you save money because yes. yes. college is expensive. Mm -hmm. So I, mean, I, I don't have any drawbacks that I can see. So thank you very much for, for presenting. Thank you. This is important. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you said 11 students. So would that be one class? Mm -hmm. One class. So one section. it is going to be one class. One section. Correct. So one period. Yes. Okay. Great. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. All right, next item is to the health education update. Miss Scott. Miss hey. <laughs> Scott. I love this show. It's like, great. Um, okay. So, as all of you are aware um, from several updates, that uh, in 2021, Ohio passed the Safe Students Act, which we discussed before. Um, it included additional health education requirements. Um, that uh, we are to incorporate three topics um, that the state passed per the law suicide prevention, safety prevention, and social inclusion. Um, those are to go into effect July 1, 2023. This past fall, we created a committee in order to go through the state approved programs and you do have to select from the list. So currently there are five or six programs for the suicide and safety piece, and then three approved programs for social inclusion. So our committee evaluated the programs this year made up of counselors, health education teachers, um, and our PE teachers as well. Um, and the recommendation from the committee is to adopt Erica's Lighthouse for our safety and um, safety uh, training and suicide prevention and to start with Hello program <coughs> for social inclusion. Um, both all of those programs, of course, are on the state list and are evidence-based. Um, Erica's Lighthouse, um, that one, and I know I included the slides um, for those as well. Those are the general slides. Um, but it is one that was endorsed by Grant S. Hope and Hope Squad. That's the one they wanted to partner with. So since we have Hope Squad already, it seems like a natural fit. All the programs, I will say, are good, though. I mean, the ones on the state list all fit, of course, all the requirements. They had to be submitted for approval. Um, start with how, The reason we want to start with Hello rather than the other two, which is Botman Life Skills and Seven Mindsets, that's a, an entire curriculum that you would have to purchase with 15 to 30 lessons. Start with Hello is just for social inclusion. So for right now to get us started, that's the one hour requirement, um, which really does promote kindness, inclusion, um, and general respect for others. Uh, next year, we are still, we have an implementation plan at middle school where social inclusion will be through um, a school assembly, grade level assemblies. 
um, uh, designed by our counselors and our health education teachers. Um, and then at the high school, um, most all three elements will be done through grade level assemblies. Their homerooms there are only 15 minutes. In the middle school, though, uh, we are going to do the suicide prevention and safety prevention through classroom instruction. So our counselors will be delivering the instruction, but we would like that in smaller groups. So at the middle school level, we'll be working on uh, pushing in through classrooms um, for a period. Um, I think we're, we're thinking of October um, to do those two pieces, which are more sensitive and they wanna be in smaller groups to answer questions from students for those two items. So that's the recommendation from the committee. Um, and I, I gladly take any, oh, and parents can opt out. So I just wanna make that clear. The state has made it very clear um, in the compliance portion that the school will notify, the school will be sending letters home about both programs and parents can opt out of any one or three pieces. Um, they'll have an opt out available to them um, for any of the three requirements. So that, that's our plan now for 612. I'm really proud um, of a let. I wanna thank the, the people that were just here who served on the committee, um, who went through the programs for the last several months to select the one that best fits the city. I'll take any questions. Any questions? <laughs> okay, hello program, social inclusion, one hour required. Mm -hmm. And then once that program, is that like going to be an assembly or individually rolled out? It depends on the building. Well, no, for that one, it's gonna be grade level assembly. So that one I can say for that one hour component, we'll be done grade level assemblies of six through 12. Okay, so then, once that's executed, then is that it for this requirement? Although there will there be the, spinoff materials? There's on it? Te the teams are working, and we don't have anything to present tonight. But based on I mean, we, I feel like the board's been having a conversation. Our leadership teams have been having conversation about more um, about potential programming regarding anti-bullying. We do not have anything selected or ready to be presented, but those are conversations that are being had. To start with hello, I think is a great jump start, which we're hoping to do in September. But currently, Ms. Sephora, we have no um, plan to like, purchase additional curriculum at this time. But these teams comprised of many of the people here tonight are working on a longer term plan um, uh, like a monthly theme. We talked about a lot of different things, but the PBIS team is kind of leading that those efforts. So we will keep you updated um, when we have something uh, to present. Because when I even look at the Hello program, I mean, yeah. it just looks like really simple, yeah. basic yeah. humanitarian type yeah. of dynamics mm -hmm. that, yeah, they, you know, I don't know. And I, I was a schooled that way. That's the way our teachers were, you know. You just, no, wait your turn, say please, yeah. okay, pick yeah. that up. Say, I mean, it was just constantly reinforced and it was no formalized program. It was just going to school and that's what you were taught as part of that. And it's part of, and it is part of our PBIS Tip City values that all of our counselors and teachers are promoting as well. I think we're working on a larger scale effort, but we're not there yet. So it's, okay. it's just evaluating, looking at different things, yeah. being ready for, for you all to have something to present. Um, we're not there yet, but those teams are discussing those efforts. Okay. So there'd be no surprises. No. <laughs> okay. No. 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 These ones, the states made it pretty clear, like from for just this requirement that they want us to select from a list that they have taken. That's where we're Quick bigger follow up on that. Right. Um, a lot of times when when you get state state programs or state requirements, you've got diversity of educational experiences all over the state. So it, it would be my belief that you know, like you said, that this is what we did at school, and this is what we learned at school, you know, these, these basic things. It, it would be my belief that this will be a repeat of things that teachers have already worked yeah. on, you know, with the students. And so these might be like looked at as like the minimum, you know, requirements uh, because some students and or some systems, it, it may not be an expectation that that's part of, you know, of the educational experience. And so now they have to add that in. It's it's here and then we can build off of yes. this this minimum program and, and, and put extra things in there. 
This is done away. So my question would be for you, Mr. Stefanik. Um, these programs are all great, you know, fine and dandy. I understand that. I think we're starting to get a little bit of staff and student burnout. And by burnout, I mean, you know, you mentioned October. Isn't that Suicide Awareness Month? We don't call it suicide. What do we call it? Um, That's not the correct term. Well, we say like student mental health. Okay, we used to call it suicide, but we don't call it that anymore. Change the name. So my issue is the kids attend these, um, you know, these grade level seminars. They do the little group sessions, and that's all great. But as a district, then we don't do anything about it, right? I mean, when you have 19 kids leaving the middle school this year, withdrawing because of these types of issues, if we're going to have these kinds of programs, which I like and I want, let's actually handle the issues. We have the same repeat offenders. Billy keeps still in Susie's lunchbox or, you know, on and on and on. Same kids getting into fights in the bathrooms. So clearly this is, you know, this, how do we, how do we have it dovetail with here's the program, but then the principal and superintendent, we're not doing anything. Same kids are bullying, bullying, bullying. We're not doing anything about it. So if we're going to have these programs, let's actually put some meat into it, have some accountability and do something about it on the back end. Quit wasting staff members' time. And our students in grades six through 12, they're smart. They know that the school isn't doing anything. They talk about this. It's not a secret. If we're gonna do these programs, follow up, have some accountability. Don't waste people's time. That's disrespectful to staff, students, and families. That would be my request. Thank you. Anyone else? I would just add that I think that's what Don's trying to do. And I also you know, would throw one more thing in there, too. You know, sometimes I, I think parents need to go to some of these classes. Agreed. So, Very much so. I think kindergarten teacher. It's a burden for the teachers. I know it is. And there are, I mean, some of the things that the counselors I know are working on in the PBIS teams are um, parent engagement nights, talking about some of these issues. So that is just something they are, they're working on very much of how we're going to roll that out. We have two just powerhouse counselors in the middle school this year and new high schools. They're, they're really kind of working on that next piece, like that next element of how to build momentum um, into reaching out into the community and helping our parents and community members understand some of the issues as well. So that is part of the, the, the pieces of the team. Good. That's awesome. Oh. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. I'm sorry, Simon, but you know, we're going to talk about real issues and you don't want me talking about bullying. Well, that's just tough crap because that's real issues. And until we fix the bullying in this district, we're not going to have a $40 million building and $80 million. So you can sit there and sigh all you want, but when 19 kids leave the middle school, there needs to be real talk. Point, point of order. So Mrs. Scott, you mentioned PBI. Point of order. This is not the way. Your, your comment is out of order. No, it's not. You made a personal attack. It's not Who did I attack? Order. Yeah, I am not Who signing. Did I attack? You are saying you. you Who did I? Attack? All I did is recognize your your you, you to speak. You sighed and, and rolled your eyes. I did not roll my yes, eyes. Yes, you did. Okay, you, oh, you cannot. I'm over it. Just talk about what you'd like to talk. I am but, talking. No, hold on. It's all related. But right now, we are talking about the health education update. Yeah. And 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 the curriculum related to that, so that we can evaluate. That's what I'm talking. We about. are not. We are not here to discuss. Your, your perception of whether this school district is addressing it's not a bullying. perception. 19 kids with group in the middle school this year. That is I, I need you to please keep it to the issues. I am Do not talking engage about in issues. personal attacks. It's not a personal attack. The district is not addressing bullying. How is that a personal attack, Simon? How is it a personal attack? You had no, you're going to accuse me of something. You're going to tell me why. You, why I, I already articulated attack? it, Mrs. Dunaway. No. Yeah, I recognize you. You had another question. Please proceed. Well, if we're going to do formal Roberts rules, then you need to step down as chair. Because if you're going to do formal Roberts rules, which you're trying to do, order, you're, you're not allowed to speak. You can only be a moderator. We're either going to do formal Roberts rules. That does not rules, apply to not. small boards. And that's why we shouldn't use formal point Roberts point. rules. No, that does not mean that the oh rules don't apply. It means you're a dictator. We've yeah. never voted on this. You've been a dictator. Mrs. For Dunaway, months. this is my last point of order. You may point of order address the yes, speaker. I don't care. Uh, your speaker. Well, then I'm quit interrupting request. me. Then quit interrupting me. So, Mrs. Scott, you bring up a good point on PBIS. So, I think we've had PBIS for four years now. 
And it takes time. You have to, you know, it's, you, you can't just say it once or two times. The constant reminder, just no different than telling your kids every day to brush your teeth. It's something you don't think you should have to do that, but you do. And eventually it does sink in. So as the kids get older in their, in their grade bands, we do see something starting to be adhered to and, and catch on. But the PBIS would be a perfect example for us. And um, this isn't really so much a curriculum issue as a Mr. Stefanik issue, but just those little things when we tell kids like, you know, hey, you know, this is a PBIS value and, you know, you violated it. So now you're going to have to whatever detention. And then other kids say, well, the school really is serious because we went to that wonderful assembly that Mrs. Scott's team spent a lot of time researching it. And, you know, when you do something wrong, you're actually going to be held accountable. And you would be surprised. Kids will actually start getting in line because they don't want to get in trouble. They really don't want to get in trouble. And sometimes the kids that are getting in trouble, they do it because they want attention. So sometimes if you just come in and have that conversation with those students, they might disclose all kinds of stuff that you didn't know about. Then you send them to a counselor and then we get down to root cause and it's a conversation that needs to happen. So addressing things is not a bad thing. Addressing stuff leads to real information, which is real solutions. So it, that's not necessarily a your team issue, but the PBIS just kind of jogged my memory and how we can start making this a situation where kids are like, this is serious. It's not just fluff. Because the fluff right now, it's just fluff. And it doesn't really go very far. So thank you. But I appreciate your time in, in the work and getting the program rolling. That's good. Thank you, Mrs. Stanley. Mr. Stefani, um, I had a question for you. And it, it was stated just recently by a member that we had 18 or 19 withdrawals related to bullying. Did, did we have 18 and 19 withdrawals due to bullying, or was it just withdrawals with no description because I, I I think the email that you sent us didn't have any distinctions on that like like did they move out of school district or do we have any information on that I don't have all the breakdowns on that the only ones that had a list is that we didn't have um, uh, the actual name of the school that, that somebody went to and those were um, folks that actually moved out of state and out of country we had a couple of students that moved out of the country. Uh, and so what we're doing now is we are um, going back on the numbers and, and seeing if when people uh, filled out the withdrawal forms, if they put a reason down. Uh, they don't have to, uh, but we'll see if, uh, if we have reasons. Uh, some people have stated reasons, um, and uh, um, uh, actually some of the evening in presentations and in public comment you know, at, at the board meeting. Uh, we've had a couple, but uh, you know, we do not have um, the, the actual data on how many actually moved and, and how many uh, left for a particular reason. I mean, I think that's important for us to understand, obviously. Mm -hmm. But at this present time, I guess, we don't know why 18 and 19 people withdrew. We, we have a feeling some of them, probably because they don't like the environment here. But some, some, and some of you have, you have typical. Um, I know in that breakdown, when I did this, uh, there was a, a chunk that had occurred over the summer. Uh, but we don't have reasons, but summer is a typical uh, transition time for uh, for families and, and school districts. And so you have, um, you have summer time and you have typically Christmas break uh, are the two times a year when you have the biggest transitions in, in schools. Uh, but again, the, the reasons, the only ones I know for a fact are the ones that actually left the state of Ohio or the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they were listed there because we didn't have the exact name of the school in the, in the chart. And Additionally, you know, whether Tip City has a, a more significant bullying problem than other school districts, we, have, we, don't, we haven't compared this data related to percentages of other school districts similar size and, 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 and political makeup or anything like that. And so really, we can't really correlate what this means at this point. Is that right? All right. Um, Ms. Scott, I, I think that what you've put together is awesome. Um, you know, I, I shared this earlier, I, the, the way kids communicate with each other and they treat each other is drastically different than what I recall when I, went, I was growing up. Um, it's incredible. I think the PBIS stuff has really been really amazingly positive uh, influence. And, and I think I get, you know, to see that because my children have been probably a part of it since the 
you know, for the first year all the way through fourth grade now, they've always had PBIS and nothing else. It's just, a, I just can't imagine, you know, uh, without it. It's, it's incredible. I think these are great, great programs and um, I look forward to hearing more about it. Thank you. Thank you. Any, anyone else? Next item is 2E, newly created position reports. <laughs> Dr. Tuttle Huff, this is Don Scott uh, and, and Ms. Sarah Ramsey. Yeah, anybody? <laughs> 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 it is a courtroom a lot of times. It is a courtroom, not a boardroom a lot of times. Yeah. It happens. Actually, it looks more like Jeopardy. You know, the three new people. Yeah, like your three new people. questions and get them all the information. We thought, do you want me to go? Go right ahead. Yeah, I've been talking to you. Been doing it. Oh, um, we presented our reports that hopefully you've had a chance to read over and look at. So we were hoping during this discussion, we can answer any questions that you may have about our roles, responsibilities, um, things that we've been working on, challenges that we face, just anything at all. Um, having seen the documents, um, we'd love to answer any questions. We're very happy we've been, I, I would just like to say it's been a really, 20 months, but 20 months? Okay. Yeah. The three of us work really well together. Um, we are very grateful. I think I've expressed this before that um, you've created the three positions from one. Um, coming from a larger district, I can't imagine <laughs> um, how, how one person did it all. And now that I, I, I know Mr. Bierhoff, I always say to him, how, how in the world, <laughs> how in the world. So thank you so much. It's been a lot to learn having grown new positions. So there have been growing pains, um, but in this office, we feel supported by one another. Um, by Mr. Stefanik, by everyone in the board office, the principals. So we feel very supported by staff and by the administrators in our positions as, as we've navigated um, what those are going to look like. And we're still working on that. So after 20 months, um, it's not like we have everything perfectly carved out, but a lot of processes have been started or were ongoing um, through some of those changes. Um, and we're, we're proud of the work thus far. Um, and now I'll take questions on that. Sorry. I read, you know, in detail all three of your reports, and I thought they were all were very good reports. I mean, there was so much detail in your accomplishments and everything you've done. It was good. So I'm, that's that's what I'm going to say right now. Is before you even start, they were great reports. Keep up the good work. Mine was much more colorful, wasn't it? Yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> I like the picture thing. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I was just going to say, um, what do you guys feel like, I mean, I read the reports, but what do you feel like has been the most challenging thing from each one of you as you kind of come into this position? Because I know you all are dealing with different aspects of, of education and education is a big tough, a big thing. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel like, maybe if you guys could just tell us like some of your biggest challenges? Coming into this position, you want to go start? first. Or you want me? <laughs> I have to start. Okay. I'll go first. Um, there's been many challenges. Um, I kind of talked about the different departments I oversee. Um, of those departments, of course, the special ed has been the most challenging. There's so much um, compliance and procedure that you know we have to make sure that we're following. So to kind of put guidance out there, put writing in there. Um, and to do that in a position that hasn't had any, and so there's like that ongoing climate and culture of special ed and that understanding that you have to kind of bring into the district. And I mean, it's here, but like when you never had anybody to answer, clarify, or provide that, that's a big, big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say each department had its challenge, um, but you know, finding time to address each issue. Um, I think we could work all day, every day, and still have more to do. <clears throat> um, so just kind of prioritizing and trying to do one goal, one objective at a time while 
managing the departments. I thought when I started that there would be some waning and waxing of, of, of responsibilities, but sometimes it just completely overwhelms you the amount of irons you have in the fire at one time. And, um, you know, you think FMLA or Title IX, those are seem like just simple things. They consume your life when you start them. And, and so a lot of mine has been, my time has been consumed with investigations or um, meeting with people to talk about their uh, FMLA. And those are meetings that take a while because you want to listen to them. You want to understand what their problems are. So that those are, having that many irons in the fire at one time is a lot of, the, not that it's bad because I'm never bored, but sometimes I feel like I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So. I would think for me, um, probably the alignment with five different buildings, really figuring out what everyone's doing with all of the curriculum pieces, what the, what the software programs are. Carrie and I have many, many spreadsheets <laughs> just now. So sorting through the buildings um, and then with grade level alignment and then uh, vertical alignment too within each subject area, mm -hmm. that those are still the parts. So curriculum review is just so integral. You know, the, my first two years, it was with the electives, which I've learned a lot, art, music, PE, all of our electives who work here tonight. Um, next year is our first core area of ELA, which is which is big. Um, and then some of the state mandates um, after uh, the, the dyslexia law was passed by the state of Ohio just prior to um, my initial hires. They're just understanding all of those implications and screeners um, and the training. So the state requirements, I think, have been difficult. Um, we've managed through. I'm really proud. We have you know, our 18 hours done of training for our K-3 staff, um, and their certifications are 90% complete already before next year. So we're doing well, and the staff has handled it just really well because it's a lot of change. So whenever the state is pushing, even if it's a good push, um, I think that can make people uh, nervous. Um, and, but our principals, who've been so supportive, um, and who we work together with so well, I think it's made um, a difference. But that's been my biggest challenge. And some of, I think in all three of our departments too, it's difficult because um, sometimes uh, parts of our jobs have not been explained well to teachers or to employees. And then when we have to explain it and how things have to be done, um, they don't understand because they haven't been educated yeah. about it. So it's hard because I have to tell them, well, this is the law, or this is how you have to do this, or this is the law for special ed, or this is how we have to do curriculum. And it's hard, change is hard, but they've handled it very well. I was gonna say that. Mm -hmm. That's, that's mm -hmm. kind of where I would go. Uh, that, that, that all three of them have, have had the challenge of, as, as now one position has been turned into three, they have a chance to drill down the more the more detailed aspects of their their areas, and so there has been a lot of system development and a lot of change, and so they've all had to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, when I, I first arrived, I heard that, you know, some things were were operating in silos, and so it depended on what address you were at, uh, you know, how things were were happening with the different schools, and, and of course they all serve different age brackets, so they're all unique. But there, there isn't a, a, an overarching uh, process or a system or an expectation. And now they've been able to, in their um, three departments, have been able to look at those uh, and try to put some consistency across all five buildings. And I would say that even because when you have five buildings, and I mean, it makes us seem like a bigger district, but that's a lot of moves for kids. So we need to put out guidance to make it as easy for the kids to transition every two years. And um, that's communication and collaboration with teachers and finding times to communicate and collaborate with teachers so we can make that better for the kids. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Any questions? Sure. Um, uh, I just wanted, to, for the record, when it was said by Mrs. Scott that you felt very supported by staff and administrators, I think that's great. I'd also like to say that the board has supported you because it is the board that brought you forth the desire to have uh, an elimination of the assistant superintendent position and to create three very needed positions based on the information that came. I already felt that. I didn't need a study. But K-12, when we were looking at a new superintendent, it came out loud and clear from the community. Uh, it was very 
very rewarding to see that affirmed that especially like uh, special education was one of the top that they, they wanted to see uh, for this district. And so I'm just saying um, as a reminder and hopefully moving forward with the, with the new culture, um, the board does play a very big role in these things. And um, I'm a huge proponent of special education. I also have a great respect for human resource because my mother was in it and curriculum I don't know much about. So, um, but I do, I do want to say that um, a couple of things uh, to, to Mrs. Um, Ramsey, well, actually to all of you, do you feel, because I know special education is highly detailed and at federal and state levels, I know this, I've, I've worked in that arena, okay, with legal issues. And so I have a great respect for all the knowledge that has to be juggled constantly. And what I'm wondering is, do you feel that you have adequate support and training uh, and time to learn that? Because nobody's born with that knowledge. And typically what I found over my years, you discover things because it's a situation that you're presently confronted with. Not because you're bored at night and you want to read another new chapter. It's because you get forced into something to figure out what it is because now you've got this problem in front of you, this student, this family, whatever. Do you feel supported, Mrs. Ramsey? Do you feel you're given enough educational, legal, like training and opportunities? Well, again, I was kind of lucky um, prior to this job. I um, had a year as an academic coordinator in Dayton. And as part of that, there was um, intensive training from ODE and State Support Team 10, where they took us through and taught us how to um, monitor IEPs. So not only were we like learning about what a complaint IEP is, we were taught how to go in and look at IEPs and teach them and monitor them. Um, then there's a, a monitoring guide, and that's part of what I've been bringing to our district. Um, first, just putting processes in place and the education of what an IEP should look like, putting a template out there. Um, it's an ongoing process, um, kind of teaching about those compliant goals. Um, we will continue with that and, you know, working with our school psychs, working with our intervention specialists, even just making sure we have the tools that we needed. Um, I kind of put one thing like we need to make sure we have good assessment tools. Every IS needs to have access to a student's reading level. Um, we have to continually progress monitor that. So part of having those compliant IEPs is having the tools and making sure our staff have the training in those tools. Um, so it's a process. It's not a quick fix. Um, and yes, there are so many good supports that if I have questions, um, I can always, reach out to state support can 10, you know, because there are so many different aspects of oh, special education. Just yeah. Huge. And it's so different from preschool yeah. to graduation. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been a good and, and I wanted to tell you how, how much, uh, and now I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions here, but I do respect the fact that you put on your, uh, one of your slides here whilst, uh, uh, da, 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 da. The most challenging obstacle has been the climate and culture of special education in Tip City. I've had to work with staff to create a better understanding of students with disabilities and their rights. Mm -hmm. And that is right on, mm -hmm. you know, that's just right on. Mm -hmm. And I cannot say that enough because it is, um, not only is it the rights, but it is the total concept. And I get really excited because we have this very ignorant image of what special education is. And we have some of the most talented people of CEOs and actors and whoever you want, you know, of the governors that had <coughs> learning challenges and quote, legal disabilities by law. And, and through the grace of God, and a lot of them just have that extra champion in their corner or that extra teacher, that parent that keeps keeps them propelling and keeps them in the system. And so when we talk about all this inclusion and, and stuff, it's all related. And we have a 13% population in this system of ours, TIP schools. And so it is big. 
And I just want to see it grow big and better and understanding better. And I understand there's limitations. Kids come with limitations, okay? I recognize that. Now I spent that as a nurse, but we have to be able to have a really fine-tuned program. <coughs> People are dedicated, they understand it, they they help frame it properly. It should never be a stigma. And by the way, Office of Exceptional includes the gifted. And oftentimes the gifted and the disabled are one of the same. So we have to just start having these beautiful conversations to help our kids, our families, our staff. And then I want to ask you one very specific because I haven't found it. Do you, where does, does TIP have a child find and what is their program? What does that look like? So child find is, um, it depends also, like child find is for when we suspect disabilities, it can come from parent requests. Um, so like preschool, and that goes through Miami County. So if we get a call, like I have a preschooler, um, Miami County ESC does our preschool child find. Um, at our school age, um, Don and I have been working on MPSS structure. I know you guys have seen the um, handbook and that's kind of part of the process. It's just the tier supports. Um, we want to make sure every kid has intervention, but part of that is as they're getting that intervention and teachers suspect disabilities, they can re refer them, and that's part of the child find. Um, parent requests, they come in, like I suspect a child, my child needs more an IEP, that's part of child find, and, um, you know, that works with the school counselor. Um, so does that... Answer your question? No, or, really. Okay. Because I think what you're saying is you're basically wanting if they if they pass through the system, then you're going to maybe find them. That's not what child find is. It's a federal mandate by law right. that each school district must find, locate, evaluate, and service those children. And so what I'm asking is what program is there? Because I have not found it anywhere. I've looked on our sites, our website that makes an active attempt at locating the children from three to 21. It's not an optional. It's not like, well, maybe we'll do this. No, it's a federal law to, to locate the child, to evaluate the child, and then determine, you know, and, and service if needed. I can go into a little more detail. So it starts with our universal screeners, and um, we have been working on those. We've been using it already. We're getting ready to, like, adopt the Cadians. Um, so as a district, we give universal screeners. If a student is flagged in those, we typically use colors like red, yellow. That's kind of the starting point that where we'd suspect that there would be a problem. Um, but at what, what point is it enough to be, they have a disability? So you then kind of work with interventions and see how they respond to those. I think what, what I'm getting at, mm -hmm. typically a lot of schools will have programs where you know, newspaper ads you have um, door to door if necessary, canvassing of certain areas. You have uh, bulletins constantly put into your uh, school sites as well as your local papers and your social media. You are actively seeking to find those those children from, from three to 20. Okay. Yes, and we have not done that. Yes, that's I think that's because I like, no, it's I mean, not there. I, I can put it. more. Um, okay. Like a paper towel. I'm so that that is like I said, it's not an optional. Maybe we'll do it. It's it's a must. And so I would like to see that part addressed right away because it has a great carryover of importance, you know, in so many other areas. I agree. It's very important and really strongly that early intervention for kids is very important. Um, if you can get the interventions earlier, you know, it's easier to close the gaps when they're not very big. So um, kind of really being proactive in those early grades is definitely key. In preschool, like preschool services are really important. And then my final closing comment would be, especially for everyone, but again, I know special education is just huge and it's tied into so many federal state laws and um, can, can be very costly for the district when they're in violation of things is what whatever the resources that you feel you need or, or you know because an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of care in this area anyone else Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Dunway. so one thing uh, Dr. Tuttlehoff you mentioned was investigations 
And we as board members, we don't always, and we should stay today. We don't know what's going on in the district. Um, typically, we learn about things on Facebook, or maybe a parent will call us and we, you know, we say, hey, we don't handle that. We have to kind of wave, wave, wave them off. You have been in other districts. Um, I know a lot of times with a couple of things over the last few years, I, I think you were here when these happened. Some it's it's kind of confusing to me. Sometimes a building principal will do interviews slash investigation. Sometimes you do. Maybe you both do. I don't know. But here is my question. I have always brought up the idea. I don't know if it's a good or bad idea. I'm looking for your kind of recommendation. <clears throat> is it a good practice or best practice? in not all situations, but in certain situations, and you you obviously can judge what those are. I think you don't have to get ready to say. Do you have outside counsel handle it from the get-go? Because sometimes you're spending 40 hours on these things, and I don't know what the staff and building principals are doing. That's a week of your time. When you're, like you said, all of you, you have so many irons, and I all the stuff that you do is so detailed, it's, you know, it's litigious. There, it's a lot. It's a lot to handle. And then on top of that, we have all, you know, investigations that are extremely time consuming. So how do other districts handle these types of things? Well, you don't normally use attorneys for uh, Title IX investigations within your school district. It's I'm not talking Title IX. Um, I'm just in general. In general. Um, let's just say there's some kerfuffle and you, whatever happens, and you have to interview 20 students. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it happens at the high school because that's more social media based, weekend based things, whatever. And then Mr. Barnes has to interview them. Maybe it's an athletic group. Who knows, right? That's a lot of people. That's a lot of administrators spending time. Does it ever make sense on one-off situations where you have outside counsel come in and just kind of do that? Or is that not done? Well, I've kind of been your outside counsel. <laughs> well, I know, but you know, but it's taking a lot of your it time. It is taking a lot of time, but right. I, I will tell you that at least I know that it's getting done correctly. Yeah. Um, I know that every person that needs to be interviewed is being interviewed. Absolutely. Um, it does take a lot of time. Uh, yeah. It, it would be better if I didn't do the student interviews because I think if those would stay in the buildings, that would be a okay. much um, more effective way to do it. Mm -hmm. Because they do know the students better. Sure. You know, I'm just meeting them. Yeah. Um, but there are times and there are situations that I do need to, to get involved. Mm -hmm. But that would be the, the types of investigations that I think I could take off my plate. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so I was just trying to, you know, with going through your your 13 page mm -hmm. presentation, and I know how time consuming these things are. So in my mind, I'm thinking, are there things that can be streamlined? Yeah. Or are those things that can be taken off your plate? Because you know, these are all new positions and especially with HR, because it's very, you can't just talk to someone for 10 minutes. <laughs> when someone comes into your office, it's an hour. Mm -hmm. So it's like ding, ding, ding. And like you said, you don't want them, like when you wait three hours, to go to the doctor, they give you 10 seconds. You're already here in this building because something's awry. And then you're going to put more, you know, gasoline on the fire by only giving somebody 10 seconds. So that was my, this could be a work session thing or, or a, a you and Mark thing, but you know, right. I know how time consuming that stuff yeah. is. So thank you. That's another comment. Anyone else? Thanks for your reports. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Different reports. Again, mine is much more colorful. Yes. Yes. You're very proud of that. You're very proud of that. I was very proud of it. Now, let me tell you why, now that I said that twice. Because Don comes up with this beautiful report. And, and Sarah and I both were like, oh my gosh, we were just going to talk. So, so we go into Canva and decide to just develop even better reports than Don. So, <laughs> so there, there there's a little there, competition. There's everything but an interval in this competition. Going I really like the random picture of the flag. Sorry, I yeah. said no. I really like the random. <laughs> Just like, hey, I just want to point out. Um, so I, I, you know, I think the benefit of your positions, I, you know, <laughs> Mr. Biroff was, was incredible. I don't know. What kind of magic he was working with. that that's just it's impossible to do um and it's still difficult with three positions i think uh 
each of your positions deals with some significant regulatory compliance uh, issues that are all ever evolving depending on where your case goes and, and they're very nuanced and complicated and a lot of people think that you know it's easy to understand those things but they, they, unless you're doing it a lot it's always going to be a very big challenge so I, I think from what I've seen and I don't see a lot but it, it looks like you handle that really admirably and I like to see, I like the changes we've seen I, I really appreciate your candid reports the time you to, to, to put them together, even though you were reluctantly doing it out of shame. <laughs> I'm ashamed. <laughs> uh, it, it was like the interview. Uh, right, like, right. Know, yeah. I, did not expect, <laughs> I did not expect the human resources director to make me see red and black. Uh, <laughs> it was great. I would have expected it blue and, and, and soft tones. So you were red and black school. Yeah, I, I'm, I like I'm joking. <laughs> um, one, one question I have. It is, you know, we have a lot of different things that the three of you are responsible for, like whether it's compliance with, with things that relate to the Office for Exceptional Children, things that relate to human resource concerns, and things that kind of like to direct our curriculum instruction. I think a lot of times what I see our focus being on is in, in, in buildings. And I don't, I'm not sure if we have alignment outside of buildings on all those, those types of things like buses, um lunch rooms and then make, maybe in, in, in extracurricular activities um you know like for example pbis you know pushing that type of, of um education and training for all staff understanding that hey when you're dealing with a student that may have a 504 issue you've got to understand how to deal with that and i what kind of training goes into that I think this is a good time for her to tell yeah. you something. Yeah. Oh, I mean, in a couple of meetings this week, Kim has shared, um, like tomorrow, I am going out with the transportation and the three main areas are kind of the healthcare plans, the 504 plans, and the IEP plans. Um, at the beginning of the year, um, Dr. Tunnelhoff does have me kind of go over with all new staff. But since then, we kind of realized we need a refresher for the staff that isn't new. So that is a focus that we are working on it, making sure that it's regular. So, um, but we haven't done anything with um, like cafeteria. And that's the next area. So we're looking at transportation, what she's doing. Um, and then and then we will look at um, cafeteria and custodial areas, secretary, just so they understand, you know, when they see a child that has a certain disability, it, it, it may be something that they can't control or they need to know how to handle it. So we're going to do um, trainings for each of those areas. And that was kind of in the um, new, new staff orientation, just because understanding that an IEP can affect the kid going through a lunch life. You know, yeah, for sure. there are so many areas. Um, it's important that you do kind of share that and train that way. I'm not surprised that you guys. Are <laughs> yeah, you're already on top of I'm it. I'm not surprised Sorry. you're already on top of it. I just was curious. Yeah. Um, thank so, you. Also, Don was great. Yeah. Crisis response intervention. Um, Mr. Patry, she's done phenomenal work with this with the para professionals. Yeah. And then next year, all of the staff is getting crisis response intervention training as part of our August PD schedule. So awesome. she's just, she's done phenomenal work in that area. I've heard nothing but great things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to. Um, Branch off of what they're talking about with uh, you know bus drivers, cafeteria, and custodial. A lot of times when you know, students are asked, you know, who's the most influential, you know, person in your in your educational career, the, the high percentage you know comes out to be a teacher that they interacted with. But if you're in the schools, there are students that their 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 go-to person, you know, might be the cafeteria uh, manager, and it might be a custodian that. That they helped, uh, you know, uh, at some time during the during the uh, uh, dur during the day, um, and even you know, uh, from my experience in the past, sometimes a student made a bad choice, uh, let's say in the cafeteria, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know, messed something up. He gets assigned to work with the the custodian, and then something actually, you know, that that bond that is created. You know, so something good came out of the, the, the bad decision. And so actually giving those folks the tools 
uh, in the trainings, uh, you know, to uh, expand their knowledge uh, is going to help, you know, when they're interacting with students on a day to day basis. Yeah. I'll say I taught for 18 years and um, lunchtime is very important to the kids. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's a mental break. Mm -hmm. mental break. I ask. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think Mrs. Dunaway was first. Okay. Oh, wait, no, 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 I'm, you're right. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, I just wanted to say, you know, one, I feel like as a board member, sometimes I don't know stuff. And I feel like, oh, how did I not know that? Your leadership academy. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. That is something that I would love to put that on a board meeting because I feel like that's very important work. It's so beneficial to the district. And I loved reading what Mr. Kanapke had to say about it. I remember when he came in here with his parents, when he got hired, I was it was a summer meeting. And just, I can still remember, they sat right there. It's, I mean, he was... I wasn't surprised that he is one of the people in that program because I still remember his enthusiasm, passion, and when he came in here to get hired with his with his parents. So those are the kinds of things that our community needs to know about. And if I, as a board member, didn't know about that, certainly our community does not. We are doing a lot of good things here. Yeah. We just don't. No one knows. No. No. So, anyways, it would be great if we kind of. If you did, the yeah, article was yeah, awesome. it was a day daily yeah. and it was, yeah. it was, but I not everyone gets well, the daily, daily news, you know. And it was um, know. yeah, it was awesome. The the, the participants there were eleven participants mm -hmm. um, that, that stayed with it, and they were all part of book studies, and they got to meet the actual authors of those books, mm -hmm. and they've had quite a few um, superintendents come in and speak to them, and different types of leaders, so that they were able to decide if that's the next. Part of their journey or not yeah. and and we talked a lot about servient leadership and what that means is serving people and that's what leadership should be about and so um i've been very proud of them they're coming and april the 25th they'll be uh presenting their projects at our leadership academy you're very welcome to come on i that would day. love that wait i'll wait, send you all yeah so i'll send an invite I, i'm very interested in that yeah. program that's outstanding yeah it's a different board game when was that article that you sent um, it's a, I don't know. It's an thing. I think they're dating. It's a date sign. Time to live. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so thank you. I love thank that. You. I love reading about that. Okay. This is the core. Yeah, I did have one of your slides that kind of threw me where it says the, the principles, Gingrich, Smith, are evaluated mm -hmm. by you, mm -hmm. the OPES, and then Hagen, Madani, Kramer. Also evaluated mm -hmm. by yourself. Mm -hmm. Why? I, I guess I'm not really understanding that. Well, because I thought the superintendent did those evaluations. There's a lot of them, and so we split them. And before, when you had assistant superintendent, they would split them. Um, and I had my OPEZ certification. I've done them for quite some, you know, quite many years. So he and I split them so that he doesn't have to be do as many of those evaluations. So is that a, yeah, I guess I, I just threw me because I don't know that we have a policy that really supports that. And I'm questioning like somebody who's a director of business operations being evaluated by the human resource director would sort of like, for me, I'd be like, huh? What, like what? You know, it's like. It, it's a collaborative uh, you know, process. Uh, the two of us uh, uh, do a lot of discussions, and so uh, when those evaluations occur, um, a lot of the, the state policies would say superintendent or designee, uh, and it's not like you know, we go out and we pass like one to everybody. It's just when I got here, it was the assistant superintendent and the superintendent. Um, in other districts I've been with, it's been the assistant superintendent and the superintendent. Um, and, uh, when I was the director of elementary education, I evaluated the elementary principals in, in conjunction with the superintendent. Uh, and, and so that's uh, that's the way that the format is typically set up. But okay. she, but it's, she shares it's all the just something that you know popped up that was new to my way of thinking, and I just brought it to your attention. And just, you know, I don't know if it, if it would warrant a further discussion down the road. I don't know. Could be a free discussion. Okay. Oh, overall, the, the slides were very good. Thank you. So 
So we're glad we have three new departments here. Is that right? Yes. Pretty <laughs> I just want to say that um, one more thing is that I, I know that um, you know that was something that we, we wrestled with as a board, but I think from a financial standpoint, you know, the benefit uh, of, you know, to Mrs. Accor's point of making sure we're compliant and avoiding issues. Um, is the right thing to do because it's right for the kids because then they get higher level of service it's right for the community because it prevents us from getting sued and failing our children and it's just a win-win for everybody so i i think that um it's wonderful to have you and I, I think that from a financial standpoint cost benefit analysis it just hits every box so uh keep up the good work anybody else Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So Scott, you believe your chair. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I want you to leave. No, I really feel like you do. No, I'm really sorry. No, you have to go. All right. The next item is 2 F executive content. Mr. Stefani? Yes, uh, I, I put this on here because there, there are some questions and, and some different understandings of, of, of what the executive content um, function is uh, in, in board docs. Um, sent out a, a communication uh, to, to the board members, but, but just to summarize, um, I, I've been with other districts that had board docs um, and the executive content function um, you know, has been used that if there are draft um, documents, um, and, and of course there are some uh, some confidential documents that, that would be an executive content, but uh, for me, if it's anything that hasn't been finalized by the board, um, I would put an executive content, then as the board acts on it and says move forward with this, then the executive content would roll to public content, and then there is that final draft um, that is out there. Um, if, if there are draft documents um, in the public and then there's a finalized document, um, I think it can create uh, you know, uh, some situations where uh, you know, people can't remember which document is the actual document. Um, we had a situation with calendars um, where because TIP is, is two years ahead uh, on their calendars, and so we are now uh, preparing a, a recommendation for the 2024 or 2025 calendar <laughs> that was out there two years in advance and then it was noticed that there was something inaccurate in the calendar and then we brought it forward again and it came back on the beginning of that school year people had actually two finalized calendars and their parents came up with which one is the last one <laughs> you know, that the board acted on so to to eliminate that kind of possibility with draft documents and then actually approved documents um, uh, I, I was trained in, in, in board docs to leave things in executive content until the board has addressed them. Uh, if the board would like things done, you know, a different way, I know that uh, you know some people have uh, uh, made some uh, uh, some suggestions or some comments that it looks like that we're being non-transparent. Uh, that is not the intent. The intent is, I believe, that the board should be reviewing the documents first, taking action on them, and then um, then they go out to the community. Uh, but it's up to the board um, how they want uh, attachments uh, to the board uh, agenda presented uh, before the meeting occurs. And then, Mr. Spunig, I asked you to, to, to put this on here because it appeared that there were <coughs> multiple people that had that thought and um, that had some confusion as to when we use it. And based on your explanation, I guess, and I don't, this is just my personal uh, perception is. I, I, to me, executive content, you know, could be limited to the things that we need to keep confidential. Like, so for negotiating with the superintendent or somebody or, or that type of contract that could continually evolve and you wouldn't want that going out and about and causing issues until we're, we're done with negotiations. Um, but like on the other stuff, like I, I, I guess, 
you know, could we, you know, unless there's like a, a legal reason that should be kept confidential, couldn't we put like, I don't know, like draft, not board reviewed yes. or approved on it, like in um, that way? Because I, I think, you know, one thing that this, this entire board has been pretty consistent in, in trying to do is get information to the community. And um, so, I, you know, that's, if, if the barometer has been, we're putting that executive content because we're worried about confusion. I think there's probably better ways to do that from, from my person. Anyone else? This is yeah. way. What, um, Mr. Spahn, what district did you come from that had board docs? I'm curious. I'm trying to remember if it was uh, my, my just previous one or, uh, or Carrot Top? Both, both, uh, um, both uh, previous districts. Worcester? Worcester? No, no, no. Oh. Um, uh, the, my first superintendency was um, Galleon. Um, oh. and, and I can't remember Worcester if Worcester had uh, board docs. Yeah. But um, there, it, it was it was like this, and there was um, public content became public after the board acted on it. Okay. Well, I was just asking because board docs was like my passion and my baby. I kind of brought this to Tip City, and it was a long, heated battle amongst the board members. And I remembered when we brought it. I, I'm going back, you know, several years on memory, mm -hmm. but I I thought we were one of the very first schools in Ohio to get board docs. So I was just yeah, and that's why I was like, I need to read. I mean, because, you know, it was kind of a big thing. So I, maybe it was, anyway, that, that's why I just said what district you were in, because it was kind of a new thing. It hadn't right, really, right, yeah. 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 It hadn't really been around that. We were kind of proud to be, because I remember Dave saying, we're going to kind of be the guinea pigs, and other districts are going to be asking, calling Dave, and on the little treasurer um, uh, communication boards, how do you guys like board docs? So we were kind of proud of the fact that we brought, you know, board docs. Point, point of order, I'm sorry. Well, and, and can you bring it back to- Well, it's a board docs question. Right. And, and right. Just, he said he's used it before, yeah. so I was just curious. The boards about the same time, I don't know what year you were doing yeah. that, but boards were talking about whether you were going to go- Point of order, I, when, when you got exposed to board docs, it's not part of this discussion. It's it's the point of this, this item, is to discuss well, we're talking about executive, executive content, content area. That's correct. And this is a work session. So in work sessions, people usually have conversations. And you know, you can have a conversation. We are, are I, I we doing just, strict Robert's rules, probably because if we are, this is done we away. step down as chair. I'm having a conversation with Mr. Stefanik, and you know, I got elected by the community members. You're not in charge of that. This is so, done away. Mr. Order. Stefanik, this is the agenda. Please stick to I'm the topic. I'm talking about board docs and executive content. If you don't like what I'm saying, well, tough. So, Mr. Stefani, in regards to executive content, um, I think, in my opinion, it just if it's not a legal matter, a contract, we've been talking about the teacher, MOU, pilot, daycare program, how, call it whatever you want, for at least 16 months. Actually, it started when you first came here. I mean, this came up before you, when, when Dr. Klump and you were still working together on your five week bridge. So this has been going on for three years. So to, to put it in executive content, it just, to the community, it's it's not transparent. We're trying to hide something, and it does always seem to be on a work session where there's no citizen comments. So you have something hidden in executive ses session. It tends to be on a work session where where people can't come in and give their their feelings, their two cents, you know, their whatever. So yeah, I like the idea of instead of putting it in executive content, just like before you buy the actual photographer pictures and they write draft over it so that you can't take it to CVS or Walgreens, just put draft, draft document. That, that's one way to oh, solve got, the confusion. We, we put that in there or we've got watermarks that we can tell. Yeah, whatever. unless it's legal, I don't like using executive content. It doesn't, it doesn't feel transparent to me. When I would say again, that that's the board's wishes, we can we can put the, the drafts and, and 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 segue to that very quickly. Anyone else? Yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Clark. So I did send. I think I initially raised this conversation about executive content, mm -hmm. and um, it it's not a way to create transparency and partnership with your stakeholders, in my opinion, and. 
we've already talked about it. It can be easily addressed. You're not confusing documents by watermarks, big draft on there. To me, that's not even an issue. It's so simple to do. What has been happening is that you take, for example, this, this teacher pilot MOU, and it was in a, a, an executive content attachment where we can see it, but the public can't see it. And it was being recommended at those meetings to be approved without even the public having the chance to read it or to come in and weigh in on it at a, at a citizen comment. And to me, that was very dismissive of the public and it didn't have to be that way. So again, putting it in an executive content, unless it's legally required by law, I feel comes across as somewhat manipulative to the public. They have the right to see these things. It's their schools, we work for them. Um, as far as confusion, yes, I can appreciate that. That there's a remedy. You get a, you know, the draft already talked about that, so that's a non-issue. And I have noticed over the time because I went back and I'm looking at many MOUs.
All right, well, I'm going to call us back from recess until the 729 for purposes of, of the record. I'm not sure um, if our call in the recess was, was uh, picked up by the camera uh, or the video feed, but uh, we realized that we had some uh, technical issues with the broadcasting uh, of the meeting. And so uh, at 719, Oh, uh, I don't understand what it's doing. Meeting had to be canceled. <laughs> Well, I'm going to right now. I think my phone is good. It seems like it's back on. I don't know exactly why that was doing that. I'm going to text someone here. Go ahead, Simon. Um, Kim Hagen is telling me that we're back up, so I want to make sure we don't have any echoing. All right. So we took a recess at 719 and resumed at 729. Um, it's my understanding that at the time the peak uh, went out was item 2F executive content. The item was for discussion only, no action was taken. We good. Thank you. Just got a confirmation that we're looking good. With that, it, we had some additional technical difficulties with an echo. And so we kind uh, of just sat around. It is now 731. <laughs> New business three, a prior meeting minutes. Recommended actions, approval of minutes for the March 20, 2023 meeting. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Mrs. Drum. Is there a second? Oh, second. Second by Mrs. Culver. Any discussion? I do have one thing, Melanie. It's a small thing, but I think you have on there. See, March 20. That was at the high school, correct? Wasn't that? Yes, you were absent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, first one. I think you have it listed in here. was held. March 20 at the Board of Education okay. office. The first thing to was catch. So, just, so you weren't even here and you got that. I, I would I read them. I think they read them. Thank you. Yeah. They're saved. Anyone else? Hearing no other discussion, Mrs. Fox, please call the vote. Drum? Yes. Zakor? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Maine? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Motion passes. Next item is 3B overnight and or out of state trips. Recommend actions approval the following overnight and or out of state trips. The FCC LA through IOFCC LA State Leadership Conference in Columbus. Dates are 427 to 428, 2023. And the BPA, BPA Nationals in Anaheim, California, 425 to May 1st, 2023. A motion that we approve. And I second. Motion by Mr. Main, seconded by Mr. or Mrs. Mr. 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 Trump. <laughs> I apologize. It's fine. Mr. Main, is any discussion? No. This is Trump. I say that's to block. Any other members? Thank you for these advisors for stepping up. Those are yes. Nice. yes. Thank Thanks. you. Time away from your regular life. We appreciate Have that. a great trip. Okay. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Good luck. Congratulations. And thanks for everybody for working out. All right.
This is Phoenix Miss Caldwell. Mains? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Patry? Yes. Sequor? Yes. Motion passes. Next item is recommend action to approval the adoption of the curriculum maps to standards for the 2023-2024 school year. Uh, departments impacted uh, are the school counseling, business, technology, and family consumer science. Uh, or previously heard a presentation on the curriculum maps and standards adoption previously today. Is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Mrs. Dunaway. Is there a second? A second. Second by Mrs. Strum. Mrs. Dunaway, any discussion? No. Mrs. Strum? No. Any other members? All right, Mrs. Fox. Dunaway? Yes. Drum? Yes. Mains? Yes. Patry? Yes. The core? Yes. Motion passes. Next item. Is three D. March 20th, 2023 email regarding Robert's Rules of Order for discussion. Mrs. Accord. Yes, I uh, asked for this. All right. So all the board members received this uh, from the board president. And um there's several things in here I just wanted to touch on. Uh, one states, um, I will be enforcing them this evening. That was on the 20th. And to me, that's an unfortunate statement because the main thrust of Robert's Rules is to have organization, the will of the majority, protect the minority. But the chair does not dictate the chair is a is a servant of that meeting and of that board so to say i'll be enforcing them without even having a discussion with the board i thought was odd and uh, not logical especially under robert's rules so i just want to make that point i think that if there's going to be uh these items that you have itemized that have been itemized in this email in terms of speaking limits, uh, a member must identify whether they are in favor or against the question. When they debate, that is not, I don't know where that came from, but that's the purpose of a debate is to, def is, I mean, yes, you can have a, 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 a favorable or opposing view at the beginning of the debate, but also the debate serves to dissuade or persuade your other assemblymen which way they may want to vote. So it's not even, you know, that that's not a requirement to have a, a, a predefined position. So I thought that was interesting. Um, and then also talking about decorum and the like, which I'm all for decorum. Uh, it's unfortunate for me and for Mrs. Dunaway that for two years we didn't have that and, and we were, you know, sort of the brunt of a lot of misinformation, et cetera, because as it was said, our courtroom, or the boardroom looked more like a courtroom with all the interrogation going on and the comments and the statements and the, and the attacks um, was not nice. And so anyway, to wrap this up, what I'm saying is, whatever the board decides, it should be a board decision. Are we going to go with the formal process of Robert's Rules? Are we going to go with the informal process of Robert's Rules? It's been my understanding in observing past meetings before I even joined the board that it wasn't really formal or informal. It was sort of a whatever. And Mrs. Dunaway was there four years before I, I ever joined. She can speak to that. But So I think that if we're going to go with a formal Robert's Rules, that needs to be voted upon, an informal that needs to be voted upon. And furthermore, if there's going to be such a penchant for sticking to these rules, then I would say the obligation to train your board members 
uh, in, in the process of Robert's rules is a necessary part of that adherence. And so that's what I want to bring up tonight. <clears throat> Anyone else? Um, thank you, um, Mrs. Decor, for bringing your concerns to me. Um, the, the reason that, the, as chair, that as I, I've been for Travers Tools of War, is I think that our meetings can get heated. And I, I feel that it's been helpful to to take off a little bit of the edge, not all of it, but I think helpful for, for a little bit. I also think it's helped us move things along. Um, I think our, as a board, we have a lot to say and discuss, and I think that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but you know, because we do, I think it's important that we stick to the, to the subject matters at hand, because I think it's natural human tendency just to kind of digress a little bit, but I think sometimes <coughs> we can digress more than we should. I, I think that, you know, and myself included, um, you know, sometimes we've gotten frustrated in the past, uh, you know, and, and we haven't focused on the issues the way we, we probably should. And to me, enforcing Robert's rules of order um, helps us kind of remember that. And it's provided for in our policies. Our policy does not provide uh, a distinction between Robert's rules of order. It says Robert's rules of order will, will, will control our meetings. Um, it, you know, Robert's Rules of Order, um, you know, you, you bring up a great point. Uh, the, the member brings up a great point with, with, with the training. I mean, this is the, the, the book. Um, and, you know, it's, it's kind of like learning something different every time I look at it. Um, you know, I, I've not read this uh, in, in, in detail. Um, multiple times and, 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 you know, depending on how close, you know, how I understood now my understanding of how things work, is a lot more detailed. So when I was first reading it, I didn't necessarily understand kind of how things worked. And as I've progressed, I'm sure that I've, I've, I've been able to learn some things. The, the reason I sent this email is because I think we, we are seeing recently an increase in, in very lengthy discussions and, and, and comments. I won't, and, and we also have complaints that our meetings take too long. My hope was to bring our meetings down, down in time based on, on the comments. Um, and, you know, I looked at like, well, you know, what are those requirements? And, and I refreshed my recollection and realized I had neglected to, to, to enforce it. I sent an email to everybody um, outlining kind of the things that we were talking about. Um, I gave them the Robert's Rules of Order number of the page uh, and suggested that they bring it up in the meeting if they have an issue with it. Uh, it the, I don't view my, my, my role as the chair that proceeds over this as, as um, a dictator or a filter. I, I kind of like a traffic cop, really, just red light, green light, and oh, wrong turn. Um, and, you know, sometimes feels like I got to give a citation for jaywalking. I don't know, but um, you know, the, the whole point of me trying to do this is so that we have concise, deliberate discussions about the issues that are based on intellectual reasons and that everybody has a fair shake. Um, I try to universally apply the rules. If, if, if the, the great thing about Robert's Rules of Order, if, if I'm not following the rules, you can point of order. If, if you know, you feel that I've taken action, you can appeal it to the board. Um, but I think, you know, that's, I appreciate you bringing this to, to my attention. I take it seriously. I, I, you know, I'll do what I can. I think your, your point about training certainly doesn't help hurt. Uh, Robert's Rules of Order is very detailed and, and nuanced. Uh, it's easy to read a section and think you understand it. And then, then read another section and say, oh, I had that all out wrong. You know? Um, and so I think the training certainly would help. And I'm certain that I'm going to make mistakes trying to enforce them. Um, but if I do, let me know. That's it. This is not a way. Well, our, since you've been the board president, our meetings have been substantially longer. They're five to six hours for the last 16 months. 
So the way that you're doing the Roberts rules is only making the meetings longer. And I've watched many meetings, especially um, very successful high functioning school districts in Columbus that are five times our size, a thousand kids for graduating class. I watched multiple board meetings of theirs. No other district does their meetings the way we do our meetings. We are a small board, five people, 2,600 students. The formality of being the traffic cop slash judge, you know, referee, whatever you want to call yourself, it's making the meetings longer. And when people recently, we had somebody attend the meeting and afterwards spoke to a few of us and said, your meetings are a lot different in person versus watching them on, on YouTube. And the way we run the meetings is just very disjointed, it's, it's dysfunctional. And the other thing I don't like is, since you've been the chair, for the last 16 months, we do not have work sessions. Our work sessions are another board meeting. We used to have work sessions where the tables were different, we all faced each other so we could see each other. There was no Teresa, Anne, Amber, Rick, two minutes, five minutes, you're done. Whoa, hey, 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 here's your citation. No, there was none of that. We acted like adults. We, we didn't vote on things. We didn't, we just talked about real things, whether it was facilities or bullying, or it would be like three topics. And sometimes we were in here an hour, sometimes it was three hours, but we had conversation. We didn't have all of this discourse. We had a boardroom, not a courtroom. And I, I just, you know, the other boards don't operate like this. It's not effective. Five and six hour meetings are not effective. Who in the heck even can a six hour meeting? Really? That's nonsense. We should all at three hours say, I'm done. When successful schools in Columbus that have five times the amount of students we do can get their, their agenda through in an hour and a half or two hours, we're sitting here accomplishing nothing in six hours. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Oh, and the other thing is, you know, all the personal attacks that happened the first two years, Mrs. Zakor, you hit on that. And the other thing that was really distracting is even taking it beyond personal attacks, rallying people to come make a scene at the board meetings. That's just unnecessary. Let's just do the work of the board, which is here to serve staff and students, and go home in two hours. This should not take five and six hours twice a month. Who in the heck is going to run for the school board thinking they're going to be here 12 hours a month on top of all of the information that you have to spend 10 hours reading to prepare for a six hour? That's 16 hours in three days. Who in our community has 32 hours a month to dedicate to this? It's ridiculous. Is that all? That's plenty. Any other board members on the app? All right, just real quick. Um, Mr. Core, the, the favor and against is in Robert's rules and, and the thought behind it is if it's not always going to work, but that the chair is going to provide different viewpoints and alternate viewpoints. Um, what we've kind of done here, I think it works fine today, is we've kind of gone around, everybody gets to go once and twice. But I when I read that, I'm like, man, that's true. You know, that, that that's supposed to happen. And they did it at the Capitol conference. That's how they do it. They have one mic's for and one mic's against the action. Um, it doesn't prevent you from, from uh, doing something different or changing your mind. Um, the, the the agenda, you know, um, you know, the, the, the length of our meetings, I think uh, if, if, if you would look at it, you know, historically and, and, and now, I, I don't think they're that, that different. I, I, and I, I also think too, if you look at, historical the, the 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 meetings you know in the last three years and the meetings that now occur um you know the number of agenda items being added by members versus being presented by by the superintendent is dramatically different 
And so I'm not saying that that's not a word, that's not something that should be happening. You know, I, I think that um, if a board member has something that another board member thinks should be discussed, then he gets that to the agenda. That's what the whole process is for. But when you have that happen, which is fine, it's just going to take a while. Um, you know, small board versus large board. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's some large boards that can 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 operate without any any turmoil. But I mean, I think just I think it's pretty apparent to, to anybody who watches our board meetings we're, we're not capable of that. Um, at least that's my opinion. Uh, and I'm not sure who the the comment the member made uh, of rallying people to come to the board meetings, but just. So it's very clear. I've never rallied anybody to come to this board board office for anything. Um, I think that's it. Anyone else? All right, Mrs. Zipporah. Yes. Um, enforcing Robert's rules helps us stay focused. Well, that's the problem. It's it's one's definition of what that enforcement is rather than what the book says it is. I have a problem with that. Um, and when we get this type, this is this is a classic example of that, that you'll be important that the, the chair will be enforcing this. And for example, members are limited to no more than 10 minutes of time on any question. That is false. It's, it's 10 minutes per time on on one question and two questions max so it's 20 minutes total that should be clarified that that should not be of a, a, a misleading statement in any way um talk about time well the book itself says that when you informal boards typically do better i mean excuse me small boards typically do better with informal rules it's less time and that's what we did uh, for two years despite the attacks, the just brutal attacks within our own board, which was something I had never lived through in meetings. And I've been through my fair share of meetings and just attacking the entity, the organization. And it was just something that I've, I've never witnessed. I, I'm still like, I just can't believe it. You don't do that. Uh, and so then to come two years later and then say you want decorum, when that was stirred up at the beginning. Um, so, uh, you know, you, when you say I haven't read this in detail the first time, well, that's the whole point. If you don't know for sure what you're saying, then don't put it in type and tell people you are going to enforce it. Uh, again, it's the decision of the board whether the formal rules are enforced or the informal rules are enforced. And just another example on this debate, you, you, you know, when somebody says, well, I watched them at Capitol Conference, they've got the, the, the opponent and the, the proponent, they're back and well, that's typical. That's seminar stuff. That, that's, that's a typical routine setup. They're prepped and ready to go. They know their argument. They've got their team that's going to debate, debate for the team that debates, debates against. That's an expectation. That is not a legislative assembly like us trying to come together and look at uh, issues of items and, and talk about it. So that's a silly comment right there that you have to identify what side you're on. And that, scare, that concerns me that if we don't have people on our board calling this out, we're going to endorse something that is not regulatory, that's, that, that, that we shouldn't be. And so um, I say we let's this board make a decision. Um, I think we all need a reset button. I'm I'm for that, especially given some very recent community events. Uh, I think I'm very gracious. I think I'm very mature considering the attacks, the false attacks that have been alleged at me and publicized everywhere. I come here. I want to do well for the school. I want to do well for the board. I don't want our meetings to be four and five and six hours long. So what can we do to fix this uh, without, you know, for, for the benefit of for everyone? But I, I'm not going to support a dictatorship. I'm not going to do that. That's not the purpose. You can't do that in a board. Anyone else? Yeah, so your Capitol Conference example was to compare. I've been in that meeting, it's a four hour meeting at least. And are you okay, Amber? Yeah. There, was, there were several hundred members at that meeting, Simon. 
So there was a, a, a yay mic and a nay mic. Clearly that's not here. When we have discussion, Rick might say something and I'll go, wow, I didn't think about that. You know, I'm gonna change my mind. Mm -hmm. So I shouldn't have to like look at something and say, I'm yay. I, I don't know what I am. That's why we have discussion. We, Rick knows more about finances. Everyone has a different, you know, a different thing that they value and, and bring to the board as a member. And, you know, the, for the prior two years, Simon, our meetings were three hours. And that was with all of the COVID conversation. COVID took up half of our meetings. And then we had some pretty serious executive session um, things that, that cropped up during that time. And we would spend two hours. So our meetings were very short. Now they're double the amount of time that they were. And as far as adding agenda items, that's me. Yeah, I added nine items one time. But here's the issue. That shouldn't be me. If other people are doing their jobs properly, I don't have to come into this meeting and add nine agenda items because those agenda items should already be on there. A board, a board member should never have to add that many. I would love to come in here and say, agenda looks great. We covered all the bases. You know, we don't ever bring anything to fruition. We have all these conversations. Nothing, there's never any closure on anything. We have board meetings. Six months later, nobody ever gets back to us. It's very hard and stressful to be a board member here when we don't have information, nobody ever gets back to us. We get information an hour before we walk in here. How is that professional? How am I supposed to be prepared? You know, and the other thing is the timing of your monstrous email on May on Monday, March 20th, happened to be the same day that our lawsuit got dismissed. So I found it very ironic. Oh, we don't want any outburst, you know, because People don't know this yet, but the law the lawsuit got dismissed, and we don't want Anne and Teresa going on camera. And talk. I mean, come on, that was pretty. Point of order. That was point of order. You're, yeah, you're that was inferring, pretty obvious. You're, no, you're inferring that I was using your I'm just name. saying that's not correct. I didn't know that the, the lawsuit was dismissed when this was signed. Okay, all right. I'm just saying the timing of it was very suspect at best. So my suggestion would be we consider going back to the old ways. Or work sessions, we just had general conversation. It wasn't a mini board meeting, and we had real talk about real topics. Keep the board meeting the board meeting and keep the work session the work session. It was pretty effective. Yes, um, I would like to say something. Um, I would like to say that I think that our agendas for work sessions have been pretty good at not having anything but discussion. I don't think we've actually voted on anything this evening except for to remove things or add things at the beginning. So I feel like this is good discussion. Um, as far as the length of our meetings, I think that there's been a lot of things that have been thrown at us this year and we have to spend a lot of time in executive session discussing things that maybe didn't come up previously. So that could be some of the reason that things are taking so long. Um, those are just my my thoughts. Anyone else? I just have a question. What are we going to do moving forward? Or regular sessions, work sessions. We have a new superintendent coming in. We have a policy that 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 applies. With, it, it, with Robert's rules, if the board wants to change the way that's applied or or the policy, they need to take action. That happens with the form of an action, which is made by a motion that's seconded by the board. Which Robert's rules? I don't want to change Robert's rules. I like Robert's rules. Well, that's my my answer to your point of clarification. An action by the board as to how this is going to be implemented or not implemented in the future has to occur. Okay. Okay. Mrs. Fox, item 3E, negligence in um, formulating employee contract. Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. okay. this is Sorry. important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I was not present at the 20th and I'm very sorry about that. No, when, when was that? March 20th. March 20th, okay. And that's when the board, um, I did watch. One point of clarification, yeah, does this relate to the, the superintendent's contract? No. Yeah. 
Indirectly, yeah. All right. Um, We're superintendents. They were, they were the incoming. incoming All right. I, I move to amend the agenda and, 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 and to, to change this item to an executive session. I know. No. Yeah. It's, 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 and here's the, because it deals with, 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 with things that could potentially deal with negotiations related to the contract of an employee. It's a contract, and you're talking about the formulation of that contract. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Drum. <clears throat> the reason I'm moving this is that we are dealing with a contract like the superintendent's position. There appears to be based on the subject that the content and discussions will include potential issues with the formulation of those provisions, um, and, and that is, is likely going to be an issue uh, and need to be addressed related through negotiations with the board and should be discussed under the executive session as proper provided by the exception. Um, and so I would move that we move this item to uh, my motion. Well, there's is to move a second, it. we need a discussion. Yeah, so I know. So my motion, just to clarify it, it is to move it to executive session item 4D related to. It was to, to move it to executive session. I'm clarifying where it's going. You can't do that. The motion was made, the motion was seconded. Are we going to do Robert's rules or we're not? He's explaining. I'm explaining my motion. So you're you're in the discussion phase. I'm clarifying where it's going to be located and why I'm asking it to be an executive session. So we, I mean, we can go to executive session and come back out, but my intent when I make this to move it to executive session, I'm clarifying what I mean by that is to item 4C under G1. I'd like to get along with Well, we have a motion in a second, yeah. so can everybody do anything to say? Yeah, I'm, hold on. Stop inter interrupting me. I'm not interrupting. I'm you, asking you a question. No, you're, you're, no, you just, you want, you, you tried to recognize <laughs> Mrs. Drum. You don't have, you, you cannot do that. I, I'm in the middle of clarifying my, my, my motion and discussing the reasoning and I'm being interrupted. I don't mind answering questions, but you, you can't say I'm done and this is drums. So off. point of order, will you please discuss based on the motion so that was made? This is gonna be moving to 4C, item 3E. The reason is, is because it deals with consideration of the appointment employment contract and negotiations related to a public employee or official by the very nature of talking about negligence and formulation of a contract means that there's a defect or uh, an issue with it that needs to be addressed because it's going to require us to consider how we're going to deal with it and what we're going to do to deal with it. Mrs. Strong. I agree with all of those things since you're saying there's neglect in some way. Anyone else? Yes, so I know you pretty well, and you're a policy and procedure, you're a rule follower. So I'm just reading the title, you know, of as written. I, it says negligence in formulating employee contract. I'm asking you, was it a, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to discuss. Is it procedural? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, I'll say it when I'm. Oh, I just didn't, I was just trying to help both sides. I just didn't know. If that was helpful. Hello. Anyone else? Yes. Go ahead, Mrs. Support. So um, as I was saying, I, I was watching the meeting and I and I see that the the superintendent's new suit, the incoming superintendent contract was voted on and, and approved, and that's great. However, then we have a superintendent or a person. Anybody who's working now in our district, okay, point of order, whatever, point of order, that, there needs point to of be order, a point of order, contract. point of order, point of order, point of order, point of order. The whole purpose of this motion that I've got before us is to keep this okay, out so of the I, public I, meeting. I've been, I've Hold on, the, you got you've got to talk about the merits I am without bringing your it. motion, sir. You, you, you're not. You're just talking. You haven't moved to amend anything. 
You just simply don't want this discussion in public. No, I don't. It belongs in executive session. No, it doesn't. No, it does not. I have no clue what it's you're talking that, about. All well, I know is that there's a defect. Why don't and listen? It's very simple. If we're going to have somebody come in on, an, on a per diem basis, to protect that individual, to protect our district, our emotion, there should be a great point of order, Mrs. Accord. You're out of simple, order. Mr. You are out of order, Mrs. Accord. Point of order. You are talking exactly about the things you should not be talking about in a public meeting until the board decides what that is and what the issues well, are. We'll decide on. We'll do no, it, put a vote and put to. We can go in and talk about the content, but there needs to be a bridge contract. I'm not talking about the content in there. But there needs to be a bridge contract. Okay. There are laws here. There's fiscal certification of that. There's right, the well, confidentiality point, rules. Point of board, I, I, move, I, I, I move to censure Mrs. Accor to stop talking about this oh, issue until 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 the vote is taken on this executive session. Is there a second? What is the vote? To censure you. Oh, to censure. The censure is that you cannot talk about this subject until until the vote is taken on executive session. Because I've asked you, point of order, repeatedly not to talk about the things that would potentially go into executive session. You you failed to listen to. You just kept talking. So I'm asking this board to censure. You. The censure is you're not allowed to talk about this issue until the vote is taken on executive session. If that vote fails, you can talk with whatever you want. If that vote doesn't fail, you have to stop talking. Until we go to executive session, is there a second on that? Second by Mrs. Drum. Wow. Is there any discussion? Yeah, I have discussion. I I know that Mrs. Zakor would never. <clears throat> she's very smart with contracts. I mean, we all see what a great job. This she is related to the censure, not the contracts. <clears throat> oh no, that's what I'm saying. I don't think she deserves to be censured because she would never. Discuss yeah. anything that would be executive session content. She's way too intelligent for that. She is talking about a procedural issue. Wait, wait. No, that, don't go into that. You cannot go into it. Okay. That's the whole point of what we're can, doing. Can I you ask for a discussion? I'm discussing why no. she should not be censured. You made a motion to censure her. Amber seconded, and I am giving my reason on why she should not be censured. That's discussion. You're going into the details of the purpose of the censure. Go That's what discussion is for. The only reason I second it is because I do really feel like no matter what this is, I don't think that this is the space to discuss it. No matter what your concern is, if we just move it down into where it can be talked about in a private nature, then we can bring it back later if we need to. I just don't. I'm just concerned that something could be said or may be said, and maybe something has already been clarified. And since you weren't at that meeting, you may not know that it's already been clarified or that something's been done. So that's my concern. It's it's not to be rude or anything else. It's just a, I'm trying to protect everybody if possible. Oh, trust me, I, that's why I brought it. It needs to be yes. dealt with. So can we just so can we just move it to executive session? So we can discuss it there. So then nothing, nothing said. Yeah. So we're just getting into a logical. You know, it, it, yeah. All right. All right. Okay. With, I, I, I'm happy to do that. Okay. Uh, with an apology for Mr. Patrick, because I think your demeanor was way out of control for this. Way uh, out of control. Uh, when we're looking at Mrs. Fox, the, please the call the of the of the district. <clears throat> The, 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 the motion is to censure Mrs. Decor until until the vote is taken on executive session. Please call the vote. Patrick? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? No. Mains? Yes. Zakor? No. Mrs. Zakor, you've been censured. You cannot talk about this issue until the executive session. Okay. This vote is taken. Any any other discussion related to, to go into executive session to discuss this item? Are we doing it now? Oh no, for you. It would be at 4C. All right. The motion before the board is to convert item 3E to 4C to be discussed in, in executive session. Um, under, uh, I'm trying to pull out the statute here. Executive session purpose authorized under Board of Education Policy 0166-ORC 121.22-G1. Um, as it presently reads, that needs to be expanded. Mm. 
And, and and I such a cover. This is the core. Yes. You are not allowed to talk until the executive session vote is taken. It's actually G four. And what happens if I do? You didn't explain that. This is the core. I have a question. Well, if it's you a valid question. If you out. keep under the rules, I'm allowed to have you leave this room if if if, if the board votes on it until this question is over. Based on this, I don't, I'm not doing that. I just need you to have order, please. I. I believe that you're an adult and you'll you've got three board members who just asked you to stop talking until the vote's taken on this issue. I would suspect that you're going to respect that. It's G4 preparing for conducting a review and negotiations or bargaining sessions with public employees concerning the compensation or other terms and conditions of their employment. And so that would be actually 4D. Mr. Patrick, can you just slip so we, I want to type Yeah, I'm in. sorry. You're fine. Just so it's, a, it's, it's adjourned to executive session. So if you go to 4A, you're going to amend the top line to G5. See how it says recommended action? G5. And there's an ampersand there, G1, on A4A. A. I have a name. I'm giving them out for you. Do you want them? Okay. Mr. Pedro, I just had a paper copy of the language. So she's got to keep more to type in there so she can write on the document. And so, Mrs. Fox, I'm 4A. Just to make sure that the recommended action at the top. Reflects G5, comma G1, and G4 on the recommendation line. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And then that G4 also gets added to the public content. That when I say public content, it's going to say G4 dash and the entire. So, first, I'm just typing it in. Um, so, the we're still under the item, and I'm on 4A, motion. Um, yeah, yeah, so on 4A, you're going to add G4 at the recommended action just to G4, not the whole thing. But CS is your item. Yeah, I, I'm just still up in letter E, though negligence in formulating a contract. Yeah, you're going to move that. Typing, you're typing going, yeah, you're going to move that to 4D. That becomes 4D under executive session. Is that after we vote? As soon as we vote, we're going to type it in. So that's on as what? soon as we vote. On what? Yeah. Uh, yes. On the executive adding, session. Adding the item. Right. Correct. And then I'll copy and paste it. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm just trying. Had to go to the restroom. I'm trying to tell you now because if it passes, then and you'll have it. Mm -hmm. Do you need water? Yes, please. And do you need water? No. Cruise up. 
You got it, Mrs. Fox. All right. To remind everybody here, right now, the motion for the board is to amend the agenda to make item 3E, item 4D under executive session. And then that would be pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Board of Education Policy 0166 and Ohio Revised Code 121.22, G5, G1, and G4. And under G4, it'd be preparing for, conducting, or reviewing negotiations and bargaining sessions with public employees, consent of compensation, or other terms and conditions of their employment. Mrs. Fox, please call the vote. Do we have a second? I'm sorry. Yes. Patrick Ms. and then Drum. Mrs. Drum. Patrick? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? No. Mains? Yes. The core? No. Motion passes. Item 3E is now item 4D under executive session. Next item is <clears throat> was 3F is now 3E to prior association correspondence. Um, I asked to add this to the agenda, obviously. Um, I forwarded uh, people some emails um, and correspondence from um, uh, uh, Michelle Carmack uh, related to the TIP Pride Association. Um, getting sued, uh, inquiring as to, you know, what the city was going to do about it. And um, I forwarded to everybody and, and um, wanted to, 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 to give you guys an opportunity to, to bring it up because the board has not authorized anybody to take any position on that other than, um, you know, that we, we, I think from the open meeting that we support them in an executive session, certain items were, were given instructions. So um, the first thing is, is, is I thought this would be an executive session, but I, if, if somebody can help me, I think it does pertain to, to, to imminent litigation potentially, but I think our attorneys um, need to be involved and we didn't, we don't have, I don't have authority to set that up, so we don't have that. Um, and so my suggestion is, is that the board consider whether we want to do anything related to it. Uh, and if so, then um, decide what, what we will do by, by engaging our attorneys to evaluate this. Because my, my biggest concern is that if we go too far down um, Point of order, isn't this the same thing you're discussing? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about when, it, when this. If you're going to use that analogy of executive yeah. session, then what are you doing talking about this in public in terms of imminent litigation and TPE, TPA, etc.? So you're talking about a procedural thing, but I'm not allowed to talk about a procedural thing. Right. So just I'm going to treat that as a point of clarification as a court. Um, I'm not talking about the specifics of, 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 of anything other than the parties and the litigation and, and their, their requests. And what I was talking about was that I don't want us to go into detail in this meeting about this. And so my suggestion was going to be is that if the board feels they want to take some action on that, because it does involve in the, um, litigation, the way that my suggestion would be is that the board does desire to do that is to authorize the retention of our attorneys to meet with us to discuss it so that then it is current. Wait, order, Mr. Session. Patrick, you're looping. 
You're doing the same thing, the very same thing that I tried to do, and you shut down. No, I'm, I'm You're talking about a process. So either you take it in public session or you take it in executive session. That does not that does not fall under executive session unless and neither did present. mine, and neither did mine fall under executive yes, session. Yes, it does. No, it does not. If this is different than, than negotiating with a public employee or their contract related to their contract. This deals with litigation against the school district. It's not appropriate under executive session based on the executive session exception unless the attorney is present. We don't have that attorney. My suggestion to the board is that we 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 move and ask the attorney to 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 attend our board meeting to discuss it, and that way we can have it under executive session without exposing ourselves to going discussions in detail in open session. I move the point of clarification. Go ahead, Mrs. Jones. I, I, I move point, point, point of order. We don't have the floor. Focus. I am making a motion. I certainly do. No, you point of order. You cannot just move to postpone this until everybody has an opportunity to speak. Go ahead, Mrs. Drum. Uh, can we, that, but that was actually going to be what I was going to say. Is it possible just to move this to our next meeting so we have time to <sighs> just second it? it. Just I was second just it. Yeah, yeah, we're just second it. That's what my question is. That's well, all you do is say second. Point of clarification. Second to second. second. Thank you. Okay. Let's do that. Right. I'm not going to stand away. So oh, oh, go okay. ahead. This is this is done away. So point of clarification, and I'm very confused because I actually sent an email about this prior to this meeting. We already decided in executive session what we were going to do. The directions were very, very clear. We decided but in I, executive I, session. Don't, hang on. Don't what, be careful, Mrs. Dunaway. Oh, slide. I just don't want you to accidentally say something about what well, happened. Well, I'm just telling the truth. But, no, but you can't. It's executive. It's confidential. Okay, but I'm talking about the procedure. I'm not talking about what we did. We made a decision. So I actually followed up with that today with the attorney because we discussed it. And I said, hey, Mrs. FYI. Dunaway, Mrs. Dunaway. Yeah, what? You are about to reveal executive session no, confidential not. information. No, I am not. I'm very well of your No, opinion. I am not. My point is... We, I don't ever see, why is this on the agenda? We've already discussed it. We already, Mrs. Zucor was not there. We already decided what to do. I, I don't even know what we're talking about. This is done. This is done. There's nothing to discuss. It's already been decided. I'm so confused right now. Because you I'm took so action confused. without board authority, Mrs. Dunaway. Who did? And it needs to be addressed. Who did? Who, what, what action? That would be you then, Simon. No. Yeah. You. Okay. What? What did I do? Okay. I did nothing. This was your decision. You gave the marching orders. I didn't make, no. See, now you're talking about executive I'm session. I'm very confused. Why are we talking about this in open session when last time it was executive session? I'm trying to get this to executive session. That's a great point. It's not executive session. You have it right here, new business, tip pride association correspondence. You, if you, want, you set the agendas, it should have been an executive session. This is very confusing. Executive session, open meeting, executive session, open meeting. You can't have it both ways. That's why Mrs. Zucor is confused, and that is her exact point. So, so first of all, this is this is done away. The information that I got related to this that made me want to add it to today's meeting versus waiting is because no, 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 Mrs. Decor, stop interrupting. Me. You do not have the floor. the floor. There is a motion on the floor. The motion is to postpone this. So you can't have arbitrary rules. To I'm not. You when you I'm not want them. Okay. You, the, the, you've got to let me there talk, is Mrs. A Decor. Second on the floor. Mrs. Decor, there's a second to table it. I have a right to talk. And you, About you, tabling. Where, where were you About going? Okay. You know what? About tabling. Let's just move on. That's what he does. Let's let's. But what did we decide? What was the what, what was the right now? There is a motion to table this issue until the next meeting. But we're going to be back in the same boat. Is okay. it executive session? Is it open session? Like what's we have a guest here? There, 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 there is a motion to table this. Has been seconded. Any discussion led to the tabling? Can I amend the motion? Or have no I don't even know what it is it. anymore. Melanie, will you read it, please? Motion to table the item to the next meeting based on. Can we? Okay, I have to ask the question. You know, I'm still. I think it should be an executive session. I don't think it should be open session. But it says if we conference with the board's attorneys to discuss matters which are subject to pending or impending court, then that can fall under 
executive session. That's correct. So can we just that's what I was to that? Can we move it to that? We need, but what I was suggesting <laughs> is the board needs to authorize the use of the attorney first. So my suggestion, what I was trying to say is okay. So we need to we, make that motion. That's what I was trying to suggest to, but but now there is <laughs> that, that discussion has been cut off because there's a motion to table it that's been seconded. Correct. But it needs to be in executive session. But to session. answer your clarification, table, that it needs okay. to the amendment needs to say table to executive session. So mm -hmm. yes, can I amend? It needs yeah, it needs to say executive session because. To we already described it in executive yes, session. Yes, I would like to amend it to, to executive session to meet with the, to discuss it with the attorneys. Do I have a second for that? I second that. Fantastic. Any discussion? Mrs. Fox was called a vote. Drum? Yes. Patrick? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Means? Yes. It's a core. No. Motion passes. Item 3F is moved to an executive session for next one. With, with, with board council. For next one. Well, with board council, and that's obviously not going to be today. Yeah, so, so it's going to depend so on we'll where. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I did that. not clarify yeah. that. Yeah. We should, like that. That. I should, it should say yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Because it's not fine tonight. It's fine. We'll do it the next day. All right. <laughs> Next item is 4A, adjourn executive session. Recommend actions adjourn executive session for purposes of authorizing the Board of Education Policy 0166 and ORC 121.22 G5, G1, and G4. Mrs. Fox, I note that you have a typo on the recommended action. The ampersand precedes the G1 instead of a comma, and then you have a period after G1 instead of the ampersand. Um, is there the, and then, under G5 to discuss matters required to be kept confidential by federal laws and state statutes. Under G1, to consider the appointment of employment or compensation of public employee or official. Under G4, to prepare for negotiations for bargaining sessions with public employees concerning their compensation or the terms and conditions of their employment. Potential invitees include, but not limited to, Mr. Moran, Mrs. Fox, Mr. Stefanik, Dr. Lisa Tuttle Hoff, and the Board of Education's attorneys. Official action may follow the executive session. And then again, Mrs. Fox, there's, you're missing the G5 at the public content portion. It says G4 and G1, it needs to say G4, comma G1 and G5. For more information on executive session. Okay, I thought I put that under 4A. Under 4A at the end there. I gotta get back out. I thought I had save in there. The last sentence. Okay, say that again. I have G5, G1, and G4 under public contact. Go all, all the way to the bottom where you have the Ohio Revised Code link. Okay, I see. The G5 isn't listed there. Okay, it just had it at the top, right? I didn't realize it's listed so many times. All right. Okay, go ahead and refresh and tell me if it's there. Is there a motion? Please. Motion. Motion by Mrs. Dunway. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. John. Any discussion? Yes. Mrs. Fox, please call the vote. Dunaway? Yes. Drum? Yes. Mains? Yes. Patrick? Yes. The quorum. Yes. Motion passes. Time is 8.28 or 8.29 rather. 
We are now adjourning to executive session. Where are we starting with? Who's coming with it? Let's wait till we get into executive session. Um, well, we have to announce it. I, oh, you did announce it. Did. Gotcha. Um, I was 8 20.
Time is, is 9.30. We are now um, returning to regular session from executive session. Sorry, I left my pen here. Um, Kathy? Is there, now that executive session is over, is there is there any action that any board member wishes to propose? Yes, I'd like to amend the motion, or excuse me, amend the agenda. There you go. I'll second. To include. Uh, <laughs> did I do that? No, you did great. <laughs> this has been a way just so quick of a trigger. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to amend the, the agenda to include a motion to recommend the board offer a breach contract to Mr. Moran on review with legal counsel to act as a consultant for the district between March 20th and July 31st of 2023. Second. Second by Mrs. Dunaway. Again. Second again. again. <laughs> second. I'm joking. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Strong second. Center. Okay, so we have first by four, second by the other way. Mrs. Mrs. Fox, four sixteen. If you can call the vote on the the motion to amend, the the motion to amend the agenda is to recommend a bridge contract to Mr. Aaron Moran uh, for the dates of March twentieth, twenty twenty three through July thirty first. July thirty first to to act as a consultant and with the uh, contract upon review with. Legal counsel. The core? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Drum? Yes. Mains? Yes. Patry? Yes. I have a motion. Motion. Motion, motion. motion passes. I have a motion to amend the agenda as well. Um, and then just for, for housekeeping purposes, this agenda will be. Item 4A, or sorry, 5A, the agenda that Mrs. Accor just amended. Under 5B, I will make a motion to uh, quash the censure of Mrs. Accor. I have a motion to amend the agenda to list the 5B. Um, recommended action is uh, action to quash and vacate the censure of Mrs. Accor. Second. Mm -hmm. It's like Q U A S H. That's a good word, Melanie. Q U A S H. First time you're going to type that. <laughs> All right, that was made by Patrick Mains. Um, any discussion? This is for the agenda item. Right. Mrs. Fox, please call the vote. Patry? Yes. Mains? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Secor? Yes. I thought I could say no just for time. Motion passes. I, I thought about Item 5B that. is now um, recommended action to quash and vacate the censure of Mrs. Secor. So I'm going to call the new category um, new business. You can Section call it two. new business too, if you, if you, if you want. Okay. All right. Mrs. Zakor, you want to, um, the next item is 5A, uh, recommended actions to offer a bridge contract to Mr. Moran for March 20th through July 31st, 2023. Would you like to make a motion now that the agenda has been modified? Oh yes, certainly. I move that the uh, board offer Mr. Moran, a bridge contract on review with our legal counsel as a consultant for the district between the period of March 20th to July 31st, 2023. Second. Second by Mrs. Trump. Any discussion, Mrs. No. Any discussion, Mrs. Trump? No. Any other members? Uh, I'd like to thank Mrs. Accord for bringing this to the board's attention. Mrs. Fox, please call the vote. The core? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. 
Mains? Yes. Patrick? Yes, motion passes. Next item is recommend action to quash and vacate the censure of Mrs. Zakor. Um, I will make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mrs. Drum. Um, Mrs. Zakor, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, it is a very important matter. Uh, you know, wish things would have got a hand, but I really appreciate your, your bringing it to the board attention. Um, and look forward to, to try and resolve this different the next time. You're welcome. And thank you for quashing the censure. I appreciate that. All right, any other discussion? All right. Mrs. Fox, please call the vote. Patrick? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Mains? Yes. Sikor? Yes. So we should pass the censure's question vacated. Anything else? Uh, uh, okay, I guess I am now is 6A future agenda items. Anything from the, the group? This is a quarter. Um, has there um, he's circling back for T step to come in and speak? I guess that kind of is that okay? 24. Okay, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the plane the plan is for 24. Yeah, thank you. And and I think Mark's communicating with them on on that so that they know because I think they 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 intend to present some some materials, so I think that. Okay. We're giving them a heads up. It's my understanding. Is that right? Yes. Uh, we, we, had, we had another little communication yeah. bump. Um, uh, we, we had the item tabled, and so it was forwarded to this meeting. And so then uh, mm. Ms. Williams reached out to TSEP and, and said, we didn't know, you know, it was almost a repeat of, and she said, oh, I just put it there because it was tabled. So I pushed it to this meeting if it's for the 24th, and I told her it was. And so then we, uh, we got that, but I'll reach out after tonight again and let them know that the uh, schedule for the 24th. I think I saw an email. Yeah. That was all. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, it's just getting my memory, so it's not that important. All right. Anything else for, uh, for the group? Or, uh, uh, the, well, let me start with this. Sorry. 7A upcoming meetings. Next regular board meeting will take place on April 13th. It's not in the public content. It's our special board meeting. It's a special meeting that will take place at the uh, typical new high school. Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Wednesday? And what time? No, 5 45. 5 45. Wait, it's Thursday. You said Wednesday. Right? It's Thursday. 13th is a Thursday. Okay, yeah, thanks. I don't know why I said Wednesday. So April 13th, Thursday at 5.45 p.m. Um, special meeting at Tippecanoe High School. After that, the next regular board meeting will take place on April 24th, 2023 at the Board of Education, beginning at 6 p.m. And the next work session will be to take place on Tuesday, May 2nd, 2023 at the Board of Education, beginning at 5 p.m. And the uh, next item is the adjournment. But before we do that, is there anything else for the members for the good of the order? All right. I want to send a motion to adjourn. Second. First. Oh, move. First. I'm sorry. All right. This is a quarter first. Is there a second? Rick, you want to do the honors? Sure. Second. All right. Back on track. Mrs. Fox, please call the vote. The quarter? Yes. Means? Yes. Drum? Yes. Dunaway? Yes. Patrick? Yes, motion passes. We are now adjourned. The time is 9.39 p.m. Uh, just shy of five hours. I'm proud of it.